Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the four hours of pure classic racing. It's, of course, the THR four hours of Deutschlandring. Entrance from Virtual Racing, TH Racing, America's Sim Racing League, the classic vintage racers, clock cockpit racing simulation, as well as Virtula Asphalt, make up an epic 36-car grid, all of which will be fighting with raw pace, strategy, and inter-team tactics to come out on top. You are joined by myself and my good friend Alfoib, who will be providing elaborate commentary on this mammoth of an event. 12 legendary sports cars, all from the 1960s, on a picturesque course set in rural Germany. It was CRS who have taken pole in the Porsche 904 slash 6, driven by Jaden HW and Adam Ike 99. The side heart manager really proving his versatility in multiple classes of racing alongside the most recent THR champion. Classic team side heart are really ones to look out for tonight. I'm going to hand you over to Pitman now, who can do a small introduction on the event that he's hosting. Yeah, hey guys, here's Pitman. Uh, um, I'm the uh, founder and uh, one of the admins of uh, THR, uh, or we call uh, our longer name is TH Racing. Um, we uh, we have got founded in uh, 2018, uh, in December 2018, and uh, yeah, we developed since then, so we grew steadily since then, and uh, this is our third uh, um, endurance event we host, and uh, we have done put in a lot of work uh, in the last weeks, uh, and I want to um, say thank you to some guys uh, who helped us uh, and me and made this event uh, uh, possible. So at first I want to thank uh, Virtual Racing for hosting these streams. So we have a German stream and an English stream today. This is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so full coverage of the four hours. Uh, I'm interested how many guys, how many uh, people will look at streams. <laughs> uh, but that's I think that's pretty pretty cool. Um, I have to thank you, uh, say thank you to Michaelin and his friend for commentating the English broadcast. Uh, we know what you have done for us uh, for uh, in the 2.4 hours at uh, uh, Le Mans, which was awesome. So I I expect a great. Uh, commentating from from you guys um i also have to thank uh, thank you um fel alfie for making this amazing track bada and his team for the awesome cars we drive we drive a selection of the acl gtc mod uh, as uh McLean mentioned earlier um i have to thank uh, say thank you to the com participating communities so we are seven communities uh, which came together for this race um and last but not least i have to say thank you to my own orga team at thr um, we have exchanged more than 4,000 messages in the last weeks uh, to set this event up. Uh, we have not counted the invested hours, but I bet that we would be scared about if we know how <laughs> how many hours we invested here. Um, yeah, it was incredible right to set this up, and I hope uh, that uh, all works out now like we planned it. Um, and the last words I can share now is, uh, so let's have some fun now. Back to you, McCrillin. Most definitely. Thank you very much there, Pitman. This is for sure going to be one of the biggest events to start off the year in sim racing. Of course, there was the disappointment, we could say, of the Virtual Le Mans a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I'm sure this will greatly surpass that uh, misfortune in sim racing. So thank you once again to Pitman and all other parties involved for organising this event. And we've got six minutes left of the final practice until we shall see all the cars line up on the grid for the start of the race. Currently then, your fastest car in final practice is the Alpha 33 of Flo and Kodja. Not 100% sure who's driving the car now, but you can see it's in this lovely uh, matte blue and grey livery coming over the bridge just over the start-finish line now. It's a very fast and flowing circuit, this one. Proper old-school vibes from this track. You can see it's nice and wide too, so we should be able to see some cars maybe go two or three wide through some of these corners, but I'm sure being a four hour event, it's going to be a little bit more precautious from our most parties, but you never know. We might see the odd desperate lunge to try get up the field a little bit early on, but five minutes to go then as the final free practice session. It's uh, yeah, looking like quite a uh, adventurous circuit, this one. It's uh, as you can see, it flows really well. There's a lot of elevation change. Some of the corners being on camber that really allows the car 
to dig in and hook up nicely on the exits to slingshot you into the next one. But there's really not that much room for error either. You can see the fences either side of the track with very minimal runoff, if any whatsoever. This is the number 22 car that's driven by Nat and Flashor. Uh, it is the, if the page loads, would be very handy. It's the Bizzarini GC5300 Corsa car um, that's representing for TH Racing. Uh, this car and the team of Flashback Racing. They're currently third fastest going through the hairpin and uh, heading back up the hill, slingshotting themselves around the second hairpin now through this very tight little section of the course really helps slow the speed down of the cars as the rest of it is very very quick using a little bit of the gutter on the inside there flicking the car nicely on weight transfer as well as uh, really perfecting the lines and getting to know the car inside and out in the final stages of practice you can see them flick the car out a little bit mid corner to uh, bring it back in on exit just to carry that little bit more speed there you go another great example of that cutting it in on exit with a little bit of opposite lock just to help sort the car out a very very tidy driving that's secured them p3 um for this final free practice session and i will shortly be able to tell you where they are uh, finished in qualifying just getting that up now uh, should be here so this is the number 22 car and uh they qualified i don't actually have a quality oh no, i do they qualified p10 at the moment they were 2.1 seconds off however that is over a three minute 35 lap in qualifying trim and by the looks of it the fastest we're seeing at the moment is a 339 so you can tell that the guys are running a bit higher fuel load taking it easy but look at how much speed they're carrying around that first corner. Unfortunately, we don't have access to uh, audio on our end, as I was hoping, but uh, you can really kind of gather the speed and look at the amount of body roll. Great little camera shot that's panning through the cars. Long, long turning radius here. That's a great corner, that, isn't it? Yeah, that's brilliant. It keeps on going around. Is that turns two, or who are we looking at here on the live time? Number 22, there's so much going on. On this lifetime in so many little names out but you can see there we go a second up in the first sector so that's got to be uh, this car here the flash or so it's going to be flash or driving at the moment so we've got fla uh coming up on the live timing and this is going to be a very quick section full of s-bends that really tightens up look at how he's flicking the car into the corners and just oh, taking a lot of the grass definitely a little bit too much grass there clipping the inside curb and uh on a lap time that was looking to be rather hot in this final practice session, unfortunately, uh, has a bit of a blow there hitting the inside curb. So, oh, that's that is the James Pendry Corvette, uh, which is the currently 18th fastest uh, that's being driven with Nolly, but they're a second and a quarter up on their time at the moment but of course this is final practice this isn't qualifying massive slide there really fighting to keep the car in control and that seems to be the pole sitting alpha 33 behind them as well of course as i've said this is practice so uh no on track battles for position here it's just all about finalizing your racecraft finalizing your lines and uh, really just trying to extract every last little ounce of performance that you can out of driver and car 40 seconds to go then in this practice session. And all eyes are currently on the Pendry and Nolly car, which is the number 17. No, it's number 73, my bad, in 17th place. So it seems to be Kodjot currently driving the car. As, uh, that's who we're seeing on the live timing. Yeah. And uh, they're currently nose to tail. Ooh. A bit of a slide there. And that's going to allow the 33 Alpha to go down the inside into the second or third of these hairpin corners using the gutters just to help get that little <laughs> bit more rotation. Great, neat little overtake. But that is the end of the final practice session. 
And once all cars have completed their laps, we will see them move into the pit lane and uh, get ready to get on the grid for this four hour endurance race. Of course, there are driver swaps here. We shall uh, try and keep track on who's driving what for each stint. And I'm sure we'll get a better idea of that through interviews during the race. But for now, it seems to be Kodjot driving. And uh, looking behind, Kodjot is uh, obscuring the driver name behind, so I can't tell. But it seems to be an end, so I'm going to guess it's Nolly. Uh, Mateus Nolly, who's a CRS regular. Uh, not sure what team they are, or what, not sure what community they're representing for. But uh, we see them come up the hill now, across the start-finish line for the final time in practice. And uh, set some very, very quick times. So it's currently... Kodjot quickest in final practice. Then it's Van Beek in second with uh, Nat and Flashaw in third with the pole sitter, Jaden HW and Madamike 99 in fourth. Shouldn't be too long now before we see all of the cars get onto the grid and uh, see this 36 car field in all of its glory line up on the start line. So then that is the final practice session over and uh, we shall see everybody now hopefully move on to the grid shortly. Uh, we seem to have a bit of a frozen stream on our end, whether that translates over to the uh, stream, not 100% sure, but uh, there we go. It's all updated now. So, yes, your pole sitter. Let's have a little bit of a run through the grid, shall we? Your pole sitter is Jaden HW and Adamike 99, as stated earlier. They're in the Porsche 904-6 with a time of 3 minutes 35.561. Less or just over a tenth behind them is that Flo and Coyot car, as I've now been correctly told on pronunciation, the 77 Kamikaze entered car. That's the Alfa Romeo 33 Corsa Stradale. They were 0.112 behind with a 
0.673. Another car within a second of them was the VAC entered car of Myers and Good Smile. That's the number 740 Bizzarini GT40, uh, GT5300 Corsa. They're only three temps behind with a 35.8. Next car down in fourth was the second of the THR entered cars, which was Brew Rafa and Prahl in the second of the Bizzarini GT5300 cars. They were 1.4 seconds down. Then we've got a big train of cars in that 1.4 to 2 second mark, about four of them all represented by THR with one of the VR cars, that's Kursim Vector, in the first of the Corvettes, the 1967 car. I do believe we will have to uh, exit uh, off of the grid here at some point, but uh, not sure particularly how we're going to do that uh, at this point. So I might have to leave that down to the wonderful person in charge of the computer just to make sure that happens. But here is the full grid then, 36 cars. And uh, maybe I'm not allowed to have it in full screen. Um, <laughs> doesn't seem like I'm... No full screen? Okay, right, I'm not allowed it in full screen, um, unfortunately. But uh, this should hopefully uh, mean that you guys all at home manage to get a full view of the action. How long it's going to be until race start, we're not 100% sure, but presuming it's a four-hour event, we're going to guess about three minutes looking at the clock at the top of the screen. You too. <laughs> Sebastian Vettel, right? Hey. Sounds like Sebastian Vettel. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are live on the stream right now. So uh, oh, cheers cheers to Sebastian Vettel yeah. for sorting out the, uh, the streaming screen. Um, quick shout out to Carry Me, Blank, Garamon247, all you guys in the chat taking time out of your evening to uh, watch this event as we've now got approximately two minutes until the race start, it's the Porsche 904 slash 6 of Jaden on pole with the Alfa Romeo 33 in second and the Bizzarini GT5300 in third. We've got three different car makes on the front row and then the second of those Bizzarini GTs in fourth with the first of the Corvettes in fifth and the Shelby in sixth. A very varied front of the grid, a very fairy field with 12 different cars, which I'm sure we will all get to talk to you about throughout this event as we see people dicing for positions. Obviously, each car is going to have different power, way less. There's all sorts of pros and cons to each car as we've now got less than one minute until the event starts. It'll be interesting to see how it plays down into T1 with them starting three wide. Uh, there's very little runoffs on this track, so it should be a bit interesting with the, the very uh, nature of the car's performance. You have the very small Italian cars and obviously the very, very big, heavy Corvettes sat in the middle of the second row, so it should be a good race. Luckily for them, the track is very wide through that first section and there's no real major braking zones either, as uh, hopefully shortly we will be hearing the revs rise as it's got to be getting close to the end of that little final waiting minute and we'll see all the cars head down and the thr four hour will be go <laughs> it's the 127 car of jaden hw on pole can he keep that into the first corner There'll be one way to find out. We've got a very sweeping section at the opening part of the lap with the first real braking zone coming at around turn four after you go around the very, very long right-handed turn three. Luckily, the opening sector is very, very forgiving. 
and uh, it's really going to start getting tricky after they get into sector two, as that's when the track really tightens up and you've got barriers at either side and no real runoff whatsoever. No room for mistake unless you want to run wide and potentially let a lot of cars through. But here come the lights now. Are the rear engine cars going to get a better start? Fingers crossed they should do. A lot yeah. of weight over that rear axle. And Jaden holds the lead with the Alfa Romeo of Coyote on flow. Now coming up alongside them as we've got cars running four three, wide. four wide in the background. Very, very close on the start as expected to be. And it's the number 33 car in the lead. And Jaden's dropped back with the Bizzarini now coming around the outside. He's going to have the inside for this left-hander. Hugging it in tight and he takes the lead. But now they've got the very long right-hander. But look at that Corvette. Should the power uh, be able to help him out around this very, very long right-hander? Look at the cars all sweep through for the very, very first time. So we're keeping eyes on Jaden for now. The Alphas trying to go around the outside as they come into the first proper braking zone now. Slightly downhill. Can they go to the inside? Doesn't seem to be the case. They're holding the lead. A little bit of a lockup from one of the Mercs a little bit further back. Jaden cuts the car into the corner though, and that's going to help slingshot them down through this first section. First time through sector two. It's all looking very, very close at the front of the pack. But if you look at the timing board, you can see how many uh, mistakes, uh, how many, not necessarily mistakes, but how many positions are being made. And all the live timing is just a swarm of names. We can see the Alpha 33 diving into the corner on the brakes, helping to get that rotation. Oh, a little bit wide from another Alpha, a little bit further back. But this train for the front three, like we hope to see, is all very close. These guys all within one second of each other. I believe within half a second of each other during qualifying. So we knew it was going to be a close, close race. The Alpha 33 of O and Coyot all over the rear end. There we go. Oh, very sideways from the outcome. It's a very heavy car, probably hard to get stopped, but it seems to have wider tyres than everybody else. So the little bit of grip advantage is going to have its pros and cons with the extra weight, but you've got a little bit more tread underneath your feet. It's all going to balance out as we see them coming into the really tight section with the hairpins for the very first time. All very sideways from the leader, and that's going to slightly off-put them, going to lose a bit of time, so we see all the cars thread through for the first time. Should be able to get on the power a little bit earlier with all the weight over that rear axle. But then again, you're going to struggle with understeer. So you've got to use the brake to help rotate the car, which is one thing that you're going to struggle with. But a bit of wheel spin from the leader having to go defensive into this right-hander. Nothing they can do. And the track will flick left as they go up the hill. Can the Alpha get the better drive out of the corner and put themselves alongside later in the lap? You can see they're running wide. Jaden's still very much there in the 9046. It's all very, very close. The Alpha 33 is all over the rear end of the leader at this point in the race, but this is very much the Alpha's territory being a very light car and able to put the power down very, very well. He's looking all over the rear end of that car. slingshotting it wide now you can see the different lines that each driver is taking as they're now coming up to finish the first lap of the race in the slipstream then which car's got more grunt Jaden's dropped back a little bit that Porsche That Porsche has got to be a little bit down on power by the looks of it. Unfortunately, I was presuming that the car would return to pits automatically, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So a little bit of an error on the commentary from my behalf. Apologies for that, but that's all sorted now. Um, the, uh, the leader has now got a lead of one second, and uh, Jaden seems to be getting swarmed by two cars behind. That is one of the Mercs, and look at that Chevrolet trying to come around the outside. Very good move there. But can the lighter Porsche get on the brake sooner and outbreak it down in this first heavy braking zone? Doesn't seem to be the case, but the Corvettes run a bit wide. 
very, very wide. He's out on the grass, keeps it all together though, but in the uh, in the case of that, loses a few positions and almost takes the Mercedes with him. Through the tight section then for the second time, the leader currently has 1.1 seconds over Flo and Coyart in that Alfa Romeo, but we saw how strong the Alfa Romeo was last time round through this sector, so can we uh, maybe see the Alfa Romeo catch up, but further down Ooh, the grid. Looks like he's struggling in that car through the twisty sections. The Porsche is gaining with its lightweight uh, capabilities. The Merc's hanging on well, though. It'll be interesting when we get to the straighter section to see if he can make a pass. The Corvette's really, really struggling. Backed off a number of seconds here. Uh, not even in shot anymore. And because of that, they've now got the Bizzarini behind all over their rear bumper. Should be an even match between these cars now. Oh, a similar layout. Uh, Corvette's probably a bit heavier, I should imagine, but should be able to get the power down quite well with its really large wheels. Uh, very, very even through these faster sections, through these flat corners, I presume, uh, into the braking zone. Lock up again from the Corvette, looking like he's struggling a bit under the pressure, but hopefully it's a long race, so as long as he keeps it together, it should should even itself out when the field kind of gets settled where they're where they're going to be most definitely that's definitely a battle to uh keep an eye on but this is one for sure to have a look at this is the battle for the lead and once again the uh Coyot and flow alfa romeo's all over the rear end of the car in this middle sector through the very very tight stuff this alpha seems to be very strong Jaden's still hanging on in third place as uh, we see, once again, the uh, Alpha all over the rear end of this Bizzarini taking different lines just to try and get the better exit. But the guy in the lead really knows where to position his car to make that Alpha have a very, very tough time. And all this battling from the lead to has now allowed Chaden to pull back within a second. And the Mercedes, uh, the Valentin Knitschel car, is also all over the rear end of them too now. So it's a four-way battle for the lead at the moment as the uh, Corvette making a few mistakes has dropped them a little bit further back. I wonder if Jaden's just holding back, waiting for them to make a mistake, slowing each other down, battling. So it'll save him in the long run if he keeps out of any trouble. Uh, he's obviously, he was on pole, I believe, so he's obviously the quicker driver out of the three in qualifying trim. So... He might be playing the long game. I mean, it makes sense considering we've got three hours and 52 minutes left. Uh, but it'll be interesting. The Alfa Romeo is struggling a bit down the straight with Grunt. We'll see that Merc. What's that in front? Uh, that's the Jaden Porsche 904. That's so you can, Jayden, Yeah, so the Merc's oh. looking for the inside here. That Merc's definitely got a lot of Grunt in a straight line and the uh, smaller engine and aerodynamics uh, of that Porsche really helping it in one way but then again the lightness of that smaller engine is letting it down in another and that's allowed the Mercedes to go through Jaden's still going to try he's, he's go got the switch back maybe he's trying the to bring the car in Porsche. bring the car in again to just get a little bit more momentum out the corner and then maybe challenge uh, further on around the lap but we can see that that Alpha has now dropped a second back but that was the case last time round as the uh, Alpha caught all the way back up at the end of the lap, but that Mercedes getting in front of the uh, Side Heart Classic Racing Car has uh, might have put a bit of a halt in their strategy, but luckily there's still three hours and 50 minutes to go. So, uh, oh, very sideways there from the Merc. Good save, always the Corvette hits Again. the uh, barrier, a bit of a sloppy driving from there, but uh, kept it all together and doesn't seem to have too many issues. But after 10 minutes, from a first to 30 if we've got over a 30 second gap so it just shows goes to show the uh, wide variety not necessarily of skill ranges but maybe more of luck as this is a very tricky track when you're all in a tight pack although it's wide in some places it's really unforgiving in others here comes Jaden then he's looking for the outside gonna cut the car into the corner is that gonna allow him just to get those few extra kilometers an hour out of it and maybe challenge into this one as they're heading towards sector three, which is the very tight 
and twisty section, nowhere to go at the moment. But Mercedes, it's going to get a heavy car stopped into the twistier sections. The Porsche should be able to regain now as we get into the switchback hairpin corners. Uh, his rear engine lightweight should help propel him out of the corners if he can keep the rear end under control. Mercedes looks like he's struggling as well. Uh, can he do it? That's quite close. He needs to try and make a move though before the straight, otherwise the Mercedes is just going to walk away from him because of its larger engine. Another battle in the exact same boat is for the lead, of course. It's that Alfa Romeo uh, battling for the lead once again. Still hasn't managed to find a way past over 10 minutes into this race. It's all very, very tense at the front. Look, they're pushing each other all the way over to the right-hand side of the track. The Alfa's getting a little bit impatient now. Cuts the car back into the corner, but nowhere really to go. We can see Jaden getting all over the rear end of that Merc in the background, but how close is he going to be into the uh, run down into turn one with that lack of horsepower? Quite interesting, these two. Uh, by the end of sector two, there was almost a second gap between them both, and during this tighter section, it's decreased to about a quarter of a second, literally hanging off of each other's bumpers. So it'll be interesting to see how much this gap widens down the faster sections of the circuit already doubled uh, it's really this alpha is going to have to do something within the last sector i think if he was going to get past otherwise he's just gonna have to try and stay in the slipstream as much as he can uh, and hang it through try and force a mistake from the the uh the leading car but then again even if he does get past in the final sector is it just going to be another case of the uh Bizzarini? just powering past in a straight line but here's a good battle here's a four car battle this is for ninth place uh i believe or eighth place it's the pendry uh corvette is out in front and they've got a shelby a bizzarini it seems to be another alfa romeo in there as well this is the battle for ninth place um a lot of cars still quite close further down in the field but this seems to be the one with the majority of people the battle for 20th, uh, even all the way up to 19th, is looking rather spicy. We've got about five or six cars there within four seconds of each other. So many people in this event, so much to keep an eye on. It's just looking at the live timing, see who's close and uh, what battles we can pick up and try and commentate on for you. So we're at 15 minutes almost into this race now. And uh, things are still close as ever throughout the pack. Of course, there are some quite big gaps in between. Luckily, that uh, Pendry Corvette has managed to give itself a little bit of leeway and pull out in front. All oh, the Bizzarini looking all over the mirrors of that Shelby, just trying to maybe push him into a mistake, but it hasn't happened yet. Shelby doing a very, very good job. Obviously, these cars are probably rather even in terms of uh, not necessarily power, but their pros and cons. A little bit wide from the number 26 car. That's going to allow the Bizzarini to get the better exit here. Can they challenge down into the braking zone? Not 100% sure, but that battle for the lead is now looking closer than ever. They're a tenth to go as they come into sector three. And this is, of course, where the Alpha is so very strong. So we'll have to keep an eye on this as this is, could be the change for the lead here. Constantly looking for the switch back, trying to get the better drive out the corner. And through all of this battling, that's allowed the Mercedes to catch up. So we've got a four way battle for the lead. But look who's coming back into the picture. It's the red Corvette that we've seen hit the wall so many times so far, but he's still hanging on in there. all over the rear end of the leader trying to find a way past still hasn't managed to get it done yet even if they do find a way past in this final sector doing the exact same thing running all the way over to the right hand side of the track just trying to defend Ooh. and that is a mistake from the 33 and that's going to allow the Merc into second place but Jaden runs wide maybe just preemptively trying to avoid that and this with the Merc superior grunt is going to be the change for second place and uh, now the Merc's got it all to do as the leader has now got a second gap into uh, into the home straight. 
powering up the hill then this is where the alpha 33 and the porsche are going to struggle but luckily they've both got the slipstream of each other but what can that corvette do a lot more power can the corvette make up a few places here the alpha's in the slipstream of the merc the corvette's already got Jaden, so that's put Jaden down into fifth place all eyes on this Corvette. They're going to try and make it free wide around the first corner. It's a very, very wide part of the track, this. And the Corvette's got all of them. Very, very good driving. That's fifth to second in a matter of three corners. Great driving there from the red Corvette. But all this has done has now given the leader a two-second gap over the rest of the field. The Alpha still trying to go around the outside of the Merc. No way around there. Which is it back to the inside? Can they outbreak him? Down into the first heavy braking zone off the lap seems to be the case. Liam Mount, a flames coming out the rear end, four wheel lock up, manages to get the car stopped and guides it into the corner very nicely. This is going to be a section where the Corvette is not going to be doing too well. So the Alpha's really got to capitalize here to try and not get hold up too much to allow the leader to get away. On the topic of the leader, that is the 195 car, uh, which is driven by Brew Rafa and Prahl, which is Flyby Esports. Uh, the first driver should be Jacob uh, Brew Rafa. I hope that's how it's pronounced. Um, and all they've managed to do is really allow the rest of the pack to stumble over each other and uh, has allowed them to get a 2.1 second lead now as they're heading towards sector three. Uh, at this time around the lap but you can see the rest of the pack just squabbling over positions not a hundred percent sure if they're going to be willing to work together we'll have to wait and see but that's what they've got to do if they want to catch the leader at this point you can see the extra power of the chevrolet down into the braking zone heading towards sector three it is a personal best first sector then um from the leader with the rest of the uh, this battle for second place not managing to put in very good times. Into the tight section then. This is where we should see that Alpha come on very, very strong. But of course that uh, Chevrolet in front has got a lot of raw power. So even though it's going to be a little bit heavier and a bit of a barge around the corners, might just be able to do a good job in getting out of them as a spit of flames from the side. The rear end's got loose and that's going to put him offline. The Alpha's going to cut in here, but surely that's going to be the outside for the next corner. Ooh, just about manages to get it down the inside. Good job. Very, very uh, lenient there from the number 36 car. Maybe just thinking that they've got a very, very big power advantage over the rest of the field. Nice little drift there from the 727 Alpha. But uh, is it all going to be worth it? Because if that Corvette can get a good exit out of these final couple corners, might be straight back past him. Um, onto the next lap. We'll have to wait and see. It's still the Bizzarini GT in the lead with the Alpha in second, the Corvette in third, Jaden hanging in there in fourth, and that Merc, the Knitchell car, hanging in fifth. So we've still got a battle for the lead. A little bit more stretched out now. 20 minutes in the race. These are probably your five cars to look out for for the rest of the race. That's sixth place car as well. A little bit of no man's land at the moment. That's Nat and Flashor. Uh, the number 22 car which is the second of the Bizzarini's uh, running at the moment their flashback racing running for THR but the Corvette really trying to go around the outside there thought we'd have a bit of a power advantage but wasn't able to utilize it fully as this is where the Alpha is going to perform very well uh, with a rear engine over that rear axle should be able to get the power on a little bit sooner but I'm sure both of these cars will be suffering with a bit of understeer Corvette still trying to go for it though, really on the power, trying to go around the outside now of this very long right-hander of Turn 3. What a cracking manoeuvre there. Can they hold it though on the brakes or is the Alpha going to go back through? Ooh, big lock-up in the first braking zone and that's going to be the same mistake that we saw earlier from the Chevrolet. And that is the Alpha 33 back up into second place.
great, great battles here to open up this four-hour endurance race. It's almost like to them it's a half an hour sprint with some of the moves that I've seen. Very, very close racing from this battle for second place. But of course, really, they should be all trying to work together to catch up to the leader. You can see how wild and sideways that Corvette is. And it's all starting to kick off now, 20 minutes into the race. All the cars sideways over the bumps, utilizing every little bit of speed that they can. Jaden, though, is looking all over the rear end of this Corvette. Looking for the inside, he's going to try and make a gap, not a gap there. The Corvette slams the door. Jade is getting a little bit impatient now. This is the Adamite 99 car, the Sidehart Classic Racing Team, that was qualified on pole position. Had a little bit of unluckiness uh, at the start of this race, and that's put them all the way down to fourth, but still there in this lead pack. breaks the Corvette's going defensive might run a little bit wide on the apex very very sideways on the exit the Porsche is going to cut into the corner but I think this is going to mean they're on the outside for this first hairpin can they get it stopped very very brave on the brakes they're going to run wide a little bit of a slide can the Merc take any advantage from this at all not yet but now the Porsche is going to be on the inside for the next hairpin great job to be able to put the power down a little bit of a lock of the brakes just to help rotate the car and that is the Porsche now, back up to third place. The Alpha, though, through all of this battling, has now been released to uh, try and catch back up to the leader, but it's still all going on. The Merc now, all over the rear end of that Corvette. We'll have to see how much of a power difference or the differentiation in power is down the main straight between these two cars, but they've definitely been two of the faster vehicles down the straight over that Alpha and the Porsche. But uh, we'll have to see what that Corvette can do very sideways on exit as well trying to put the power down but this is where the Corvette's going to come into its own in a straight line so can we see them pull away from the Merc and try and close up that now 1.3 second gap to Jaden and the Porsche 904 in front they're a little bit offline heading up into the final straight but uh, hopefully foot on the loud pedal and that gap will be created you can see they're already pulling away from the Merc the Merc really needs to get into that slipstream and we'll see how much that gap can close up before turn one. We see one of the Cobras come out the pit lane there. And that uh, Corvette closed the gap all the way down to three tenths of a second. Going to be carrying all even more momentum now into this first section. It's just whether it can grip up. We saw him go around the outside of the Alpha 33 just a lap ago. Are they going to try to say move on Jaden? It seems to be the case. Look at the grip of that Corvette in high speed corners. But can they get themselves stopped in time this time round just to try and hold on to the position? The Porsche is squeezing them up to the edge of the track. They're now in behind a little bit later on the brakes. Oh, good job to get the car stopped that time round. Jaden nearly running into the back of them but manages to hold on to the place for a couple more corners. 25 minutes into the race now. You can tell Jaden's getting impatient. He's looking at, he's putting his nose absolutely everywhere. That Porsche is going to be a little bit more agile. Too wide through there. Very, very close. Now that's put the Corvette offline. Can the Merc now take advantage of this? You could tell Jaden was getting a little bit impatient and put that Corvette in some very awkward positions and the Mercs managed to take advantage of that too. That's the number 92 car, but they run a little bit wide onto the grass. Managed to keep it all together, but that's allowed the Corvette to now go back through. Awesome, awesome racing at this point in the race. Anything that we should be wary of on the live timing at all, or are we all looking rather hunky-dory? Nothing really to state in that behalf. All we can say is the current fastest lap seems to be from the Flow and Coyote car, which is a 39.5, and the rest of that top group is all set 39.7s or 8s. So the Coyote car, the Alpha's on the move at the moment, but their, last, their laps last time round, uh, that Coyote Alpha was a second quicker than the leader. So we can see the gap closing up now. It's now 1.7 seconds, where it uh, was definitely bigger last time round. 
Um, but how many laps is it going to be until we can see that uh, Alpha get right onto the rear end of the Bizzarini in the lead? But uh, it really depends if that Bizzarini can um, hold on or defend well against the Alpha that's on the charge at the moment. Quite interesting looking at the top speed difference between the cars. The Corvette is almost 15 kilometers an hour quicker than all of the other cars around him. The Mercedes is roughly eight kilometers an hour slower on the straight, but it does make up for in the corners. So uh, going very wide there, very sideways, I mean, sorry, uh, by the Corvette. Really hard racing, switching, switching back, really sideways again, forcing the Mercedes onto the grass. He's really going defensive now, isn't he? Hugging onto that inside line. Unfortunately, we've had our audio device go dead, so uh, that will have to go on charge quickly. Um, so otherwise, we won't be able to do interviews. Um, but as close as that battle is, the battle for the lead now is only two tenths apart. So we'll have to see what the lap time was last time round from the leader. It was a 3.39.7 and a 3.39.2 from Flo and Coyot, but the Jaden and Adamike uh, Porsche has set the fastest last sector of anybody seven laps into the race, and they were a 39 free, so only one tenth off that fastest lap, with the uh, battling Corvette and Mercedes down in the 41s, so but that's as to be expected. But that Bizzarini's now pulled a 1.2 second gap, so he's a second quicker uh, just down into this uh, first corner, or this first sector, I should say. Um, when really he's, what, 11 kilometers an hour quicker in a straight line. That's just at the start-finish line, I presume. Yeah. That's not going to be all the way down the straight as well, so you can see how big of a gap that's protruding. But the Corvette is by far the quickest car in a straight line at 260 Ks. But this Bizzarini seems to be a very, very well-balanced car for most of the circuit. But the Alpha is just being driven by an absolute nutcase. He's on a charge. Just watching here, the gaps stay pretty consistent through sector two between the first three cars. It will be interesting to see the Alpha already catching up to the Bizzarini as soon as it starts getting a little bit more technical and twisty. Uh, just coming towards the start of the third sector, Bizzarini going very wide there, losing a lot of time to the Alpha Mare in second place. Uh, right on the back, almost three tenths of a second, the gap now. A couple laps ago, this was almost two seconds. So it's a very, very big speed difference in the later stages of the circuit. Hard on the brakes by both drivers. A little lot contact between them both held it together. Trying to get a switch back, get a couple more kilometers an hour into the next corners. Hopefully no contact this time. Back around the outside. The Alpha's held on to it. That superior rear grip with all that weight over the rear axle, but all this has done is now allowed Chaden to catch right up to them. Look at that 904, but is the Bizzarini going to be able to hold on to the back of the Alpha 33 and uh, just be able to slingshot back past it in a straight line? The Bizzarini regaining some ground on the Porsche there, but the Porsche clinged on the inside of the corner through that hairpin. Alfa Romeo once again going very sideways through that 180 degree sweeping corner, but it has come out ahead towards the straighter section of the track where the Bizzarini will have a very, very large speed advantage of over 10 kilometers an hour on the start finish line gap is almost now one second between first and second place and another second between second and third so the gap is beginning to decrease between the Bizzarini and the Porsche we'll have to see because last time round half it was... a second gained already between second and third 
It was around a second quicker from the final corner down into turn one, and we can see a representation of that. So Bizzarini's trying to go around the outside of that 904 and does take the place going around turn one. Can he hang on to it through turns two and three, though, because the Porsche is still there. They're side by side. And through doing this, they've really allowed the leader to just pull on a massive gap. Can the 904 go around the outside? We've seen it done by the big cars, such as the Corvette. It doesn't seem like that 904 has got the power to do it. On the brakes, though, is the lightness of that 904 going to help him out? He chucks it to the inside, heavy on the brakes. Oh, they drift wide, make oh, a bit contact. of contact. And the Bizzarini's out wide, but they both managed to keep it out the wall. A very, very bold and aggressive move there from the Porsche 904. It's all looking very, very aggressive at this point in the race. That Corvette's still there with the Merc in fifth. They're all still hanging on for the lead. All trying to just get that little bit of glimpse of glory half an hour into this race. Looking at the live timing with all the battles that were going on, nobody's really improved on any of their times. <coughs> but it's uh, all about consistency in a race like this. And uh, looking at the gap that Jaden has managed to pull over the Bizzarini and close up to the 33, maybe just going all out is what they're after in the side art team. Fighting to keep the car under control. And then out all over the rear end of that Alpha 33. Maybe it was just a case of if anybody's in front of you, just let them battle and uh, pick up the places later on in the race. But if it's a battle for the lead, then just go for it. Maybe that's what their tactics were because that Porsche seems to have come alive ever since they got past the Bizzarini all over the rear end of that Alpha 33. Into the tight hairpin section this time round. The Alpha is going defensive. And keeps a very, very tight line in the gutter too. No place passed at that corner for the Porsche. The Alpha has got a much better drive out of these slow corners. You can see he's now pulled nearly close to a second. Big slide there from Jaden. Manages to cut the car into the next corner nicely though. And closes the gap back down a little bit. Porsche seems to want to change direction a little bit more easier. The Alpha, you've got to be quite aggressive with it. So it just wants to plow on the corner exit. You can see they're using the brake to rotate the car into the corner and bring it round on the apex on the throttle then just plant it and power out of the corner. Porsche has now closed the gap down two temps since that slight mistake. But they all power up the hill. The Alpha's taking a much more exuberant line. And that's really allowing the Porsche to close up. The gap's now half a second. Jaden then sitting in the slipstream of the Alpha. What car is going to be quicker in a straight line? The gap's now up to six tenths, but it's holding around that mark. They seem to be very, very close in a straight line. Last time round, it was a 3 minute 40.3 from the leader and a 3.39.7 from Jaden. We saw how much that they closed up in that first sector. But uh, when we're going to be seeing the first set of pit stops, I'm not 100% sure how long the fuel and tyres are going to last in these cars. We'll have to keep an eye on that, but we're yet to see anybody really go into the pits yet. Unless it's been for damage repair. You can see the Bizzarini close up in a straight line. The gap now then down to one second off of the leader. But this battle for first place is still very, very tight. 35 minutes in the race. The Corvette's still hanging on in the background, and even the Merc too. This battle for first place, the top five drivers with 35 minutes on the clock completed, three and a half seconds, is all the difference that lies between them. You can see the suspension absorbing the bumps of this road course. So many little bits of elevation change. You can either use it to your advantage or it can really mess you up. 
And this Porsche 904 now is all over the rear end of the Alpha 33. But is there going to be anywhere to get past in Sector 2? Doesn't seem to be the case. The Corvette, though, looking very, very spicy over the back end of uh, the Bizzarini. Really closing up in this second sector. It's coming on very, very strong at this point in the race. But so is the Merc. The Merc's still hanging on, too. Jane is just sitting behind for the time being, maybe realising there's nowhere really to overtake, and this Alpha's very keen to hold on to the lead, flicking the car into the corner a little bit wide there, might put him slightly offline into this heavy braking zone, but the Alpha goes defensive, going to lose a little bit of speed on exit there, but this is into the tight and twisty sector three now, as they come up the hill through this hairpin section. Looking for the inside, barges his way through. Very, very bold move there. But can the Alpha put the power down? But he's going to be on the outside for the second hairpin, but we've seen how quick that Alpha is on corner exit. He's going to cut the car back into the corner, slingshot it, put the power on nice and early with all the weight over that rear axle. Holds onto the position temporarily, but Jaden's not giving it up. He's hanging around the inside. 35 minutes done on this race, and they're still battling like it's a sprint. Bit of a mistake there from Jaden, dropped him back half a second, but uh, very much sticking with the leader. And we saw how big the gap was last time round, and we know that Jaden can close that back up. Further back, though, the battle for fifth is looking quite good. We've got the Merc trying to go around the outside of the Corvette. He gets it quite sideways on the exit, and that's allowed the Merc, the Canitral 92 car, to go through. So that's the leading Mercedes. The leading Corvette, we've got five different car brands in this top five here. Just goes to show how each car has its pros and cons, as we should see this Corvette now power past maybe one or two of them down towards the first corner. Here comes the extra speed from the Corvette. Breezes past them seven to seven kilometers an hour quicker across the start finish line. Down through the first section, carrying that extra momentum, always gaining the gap just tenth by tenth. But the thing is, the car in front of him, the Bizzarini, is uh, also quite strong in this particular section. Section, so uh, not going to have anywhere near as much of an advantage uh, that they did over the Alpha 33 and that Porsche 904. But you can see how much that the gap's closed up overall. We'll now go to the number uh, 727 Alfa Romeo, who's leading the race. This is Flo and Coyot being chased by the side heart pole sitting Porsche 904 of Jaden HW and Adamike 99. Heading down the hill, look how close the barriers are to the edge of the track. No room for error here whatsoever. And Jaden in that Porsche really clipping every single apex absolutely perfectly. And he's closed the gap down now to three temps. Almost perfect driving from that Porsche all over the rear end of the Alpha. But can they find a way to get past? Very, very bold moves here. Putting that Alfa Romeo offline there very sideways. Oh, what a wow. save from that 77 car. Still managing to hang on to the lead as well. What a bit of driving. That's the Porsche off into the grass. And uh, that's a very, very bold statement there from that Alfa Romeo. The number 727 car. Coyote and Flo. What a piece of driving that was. We don't have much information about the drivers of this Alfa Romeo. But from what we do have, we can tell that they are... Uh, rather rather uh, comedic, let's say. Um, considering all Flo has provided for information is that he huffs exhaust fumes. Um, and uh, according from Coyote, certain particular vehicles are terrible and their uh, stance is cringe. So we, we don't have much information on the history of these drivers, but they are representing the kamikaze in the community THR. <coughs> Apologies there. 
But uh, considering the very unprofessional information that they've provided, their driving is looking rather professional considering who they've got behind them and who, for a matter of fact, they're keeping behind them. Let's have a look then at this uh, Porsche 904. This is the 127 car. So they're representing for CRS, which is Cockpit Racing Simulation, and their team name is Classic Sideheart. Jaden seems to be the first driver. He's the manager of the Sideheart Motorsport team. Um, he's been sim racing now for nearly six years, and uh, he's been a veteran in many leagues, especially CRS. He's a highly adaptable driver, as we're seeing here, placing second in the previous THR league, which was a Formula One 1991 season. And uh, he's teammated with the leader uh, or the uh, winner of that league, which is Adamite 99 from the Czech Republic. So a very highly skilled set driver team in that Porsche. But uh, unfortunately, unable to currently find a way past the Alfa Romeo 33 <laughs> in the lead. But uh, further down the field, we can see that Connectional Mercedes and the Corvette getting very close. I know we've spent a lot of time watching this lead battle, but it's been very, very good. Um, constant position swapping every single lap. And we're 11 laps into this race now. And uh, the top five are still within five seconds of each other with the heavy and power-based cars a little bit further back and these lighter more agile cars further towards the front can the corvette go down the inside of the merc here yes they can but the number 92 car is still trying to hold it around the outside that would be the valentin uh Knitschel and meister jaeger mercedes uh, Valentin is uh, once again a very big uh, sim racing veteran. He's done a lot of work over at CRS, but they're representing for THR in this particular event. He's been starting uh, with NASCAR racing back on uh, the Mac OS 8 and uh, all stuff from many, many moons ago. But uh, he's been uh, a champion in the past of all this classic racing series at thr in the 1970s touring car winter season uh, from 2020 and 21 uh, as well as winning the uh, 2.4 hours of daytona in a bmw 3 liter csl at thr in the past he's won the audi 90 gto cup in 2022 as well as the drm revival league as well uh, no, I apologise, he came second place in that DRM Revival League 2, driving a Zach Speed Capri. So very, very uh, up to speed and into his classic racing stuff, which, as you can see, in a field of this high quality, is uh, one of the reasons that he sat there in P5 doing a very, very good job. So then this battle for the fourth place is still looking very, very tight. The Mercedes all over the rear end of the Corvette. As we've uh, now and still 11 laps into this race, we've got the Knitschel Meister Jaeger Mercedes 300 SL all over the rear end of this Corvette, still unable to find a way past trying to go around the outside get the switch back on certain corners but we've seen how quick that corvette is we should probably have a little bit of a look on the information of this corvette as we've seen it up and down this top five throughout the race uh, this uh, number 36 car is driven by Rogel and matig uh, the curse vector team uh, they're representing for virtual racing um and uh, a lot of their information is unfortunately in German. So I, I can't tell you much of what it is. It was all sound very wrong in an English accent. But they're doing a very, very good job. The lead virtual racing car, I believe, as we've got the number 195 Bizzarini in between 
them and that second player, uh, the battle for the lead, which is now only one tenth apart. Uh, apologies for missing that. We had some commentary issues that we needed to sort it out uh, in the booth. But this battle for the lead is still very, very tight. Jaden looking for the inside now in that number 127 Porsche. And he's managed to get the lead down into this first heavy braking zone. The Alpha looks to go back for the inside. Doesn't manage to get it done, but Jaden runs wide. He's out on the grass. Keeps the car all together, though. Just a little bit too hasty on the brakes. And doesn't manage to get the car stopped in time for turn four. Apologies for that, we're having a little bit of an issue in the commentary booth, but we've managed to get it all sorted now. Just in time to get back to the battle where Jaden's ran into the rear end of the Alpha and that sent him off into the barrier. Very unfortunate there, a lot of ground lost. It's probably going to be about two or three seconds, maybe even more by the time they get to the braking zone. And all that's done is now put the uh, Bizzarini and this battle for second place back in contention for the rest of this lead pack course further down that James Pendry Corvette is still in the same battle with that green Bizzarini further down the field this is the number 73 car uh, driven by Pendry and Nolly he's getting very very sideways too and uh, there's a lot of battles going on further down the field especially the one between the 506 and the 788 car that we've been trying to keep an eye on for a while but there's been so much action at the front of the pack it's been hard to do so um but still very, very close. Even further down the field, that battle for 25th. Two cars there within one-tenth of each other. That's the two Ferraris. They're the highest place Ferraris in all of the field. You've got the 250 and the uh, other Ferrari there. That's a slightly different shape. That's the number 8 and the number 76 cars further down the field. So the number 8 is being driven by Spaghetti and Gashi. That's the Mario Spaghetti and Michael Gashi cars um, from Italy. Um, and they're, of course, representing Ferrari. But they are the highest placed Ferrari um, in the whole field at the moment. And uh, they're pulling ahead of the number 76 car, uh, which is driven by uh, Frank Leis and Duderi. Uh, they're in the GTO Series 2. Um, but one thing that we're definitely keeping an eye on is that lead time. Jaden's already managed to pull it down to 1.2 seconds when he was three seconds back not too long ago. So he's doing a very, very good job there. As they're now coming out onto the home straight, this uh, Ferrari battle is still spicing up quite well. And we've even got the number 95 Porsche a little bit further back closing in too. Okay, so back to the action, a little bit of a interruption there with the um, management team, but we've managed to get it all back up and running okay. This Porsche, which is the number 95 car, is making their way through the field rather nicely, but so is, unfortunately, we're going to have to go away from this battle because so is the battle for the lead. The number 127 car was caught right up to the rear end of the Alpha, and by the looks of it, they're now going to have to deal with lap traffic. 
So there's this number one T7 go. Oh, there's the Alpha in the wall. Very unfortunate there. That's the flown Koyot car. And they're going to get oh, all swarmed over as they go three wide by the stone wall. The Merc's going to have to try and cut in, but there's a Corvette there on the racing line. Nothing they can do. And that Alpha most definitely has damage. But where did this guy come from? Oh, no, that, yeah, that is a sixth place. That's Nat and Flashor. They've now, because of that slight um, altercation, whether that was a mistake on the number 33 cars, uh, not the number 33, the number uh, 77 Alfa Romeo on, and the, the Porsche of Jaden, whether that was a bit of contact or a mistake, I'm not sure. But either way, this has now allowed the number 22 car of Nat and Flashor to catch right up to the back of this uh, second place battle. Oh, the number 33, uh, the, num the Alpha 33, I should say, has spun it. And that is Flo and Coyot. This has now allowed the Shelby, the number 26 car that we were looking at early on in the race, who's in a great little four-way battle. That's now lost them a lot of time uh, in the Alpha Romeo 33, the 77 car. And that's dropped them a long way back. So currently the pole sitter of Jaden HW, the 127 car, is in the race in the lead of the race i should say it's getting to that point we're an hour in and the the brain fade setting in but we shall see going back to the number 73 car this battle with the green bizzarini is still raging hard we've seen this battle on and off throughout this race we're nearly an hour in now and they're still going at it um the corvette and the bizzarini as we've seen at the front of the field um, with the Roggle uh, and uh, what was it? The other bloke who's driving the Bizzarini at the front. Him. Um, yeah, we, we saw a very close battle between those two due to having very similar performance uh, in machinery. So hopefully that's what we're going to see here is Jaden has now got a 4.7 second lead over second place and we've seen how quick that Porsche can go. All very sideways there from the green Bizzarini in the background, but manages to keep it all together. That is Van Beek and uh, until in the number 109 car. So we'll grab some info up on them briefly. They're racing for THR and they're doing Rust Bucket Racing uh, as their team names. That's Tyler Van Beek and Carrie Utola or Utila. Uh, name pronunciations are not a strong point. I am afraid, but these guys all very close and have been for a while. Um, it's definitely been one to uh, watch in the background just to see where they're at. But the rest of the pack seems to have spaced out rather evenly now. All a couple seconds as we've seen the number, the 18th place car must have made a mistake. Oh, oh, that's the number 25 Porsche has been collected massively there. That Schmitz and Haas. Can they rejoin safely as Flo and Coyote are in the pit lane now as well? And uh, that I'm not sure what happened there. We must have missed it. But Flo and Coyote now are in the pits, whether that's for repairs, a driver swap, whatever that may be. Judging by no disconnect, I'm going to presume it's just for repairs. But the number 25 car there, uh, the Porsche, are taking a lot of hits from multiple cars, but still keeping on going. Um, no need to repair for them and uh, on they carry on with the race but another battle here to look out for this is the battle for 12th place this is the Shelby and the Bizzarini of Margar and Pitman in the 417 car uh, oh no it's the number 4 car why right? it says 417 uh, is it 417 or is it 4 I don't know but uh, it seems like we've got some conflicting information here from the uh, live timing and the stream data but manages, uh, we managed to get it all sorted. So the Pitman and Margar car, uh, they are the admins of THR, which is the, really the predominant team, uh, not necessarily team, but the predominant community who are participating in this event, obviously hosting it, of course. Their team name is THR Bullets, and uh, I believe it's Margar uh, doing the initial stint in the car. Um, oh, so we see a Corvette go off in the background, getting some big air on two wheels. Uh, whether that was a back marker or not, I'm not 100% sure, uh, as we don't quite see them on the live timing around. But that would be, if it was, that would be Nash and uh, Murdor, I believe, in the 768 car. 
but it's all spacing out rather nicely now. Everyone's getting into their own groove. We're an hour into the race, and we're going to take a very short commentary break, and we'll be back with you shortly. So then as we come back to you, the battle for second place is raging on as ever. We've got this Mercedes, which has constantly been at the front of the field, as well as a previous race leader in the Bizzarini. That's the 195 car, desperately trying to hang on to second place here as we're in sector two. The Corvette's still there in the background. So if a mistake was made, we uh, should be able to see him come back into the picture too. As the, uh, the fifth place car, that is the Nat and Flashor Bizzarini, still once again hanging on in the background too. We can see them just there in the back of the picture, but the number 92 car is all over the rear end of the second place car. No way past this time round. Both of these cars, front engine, rear wheel drive. No differentiation in drivetrain or layout at all here all going to be down to driver skill both similar cars both slightly aero focused and they're trying to be as lightweight as possible the Bizzarini a little bit more sleek through the air but the Mercedes seems to be very well planted and maybe even have a little bit more horsepower Keeping one wheel in the gutter there. Bizzarini goes defensive into the hairpin, the final one, before they run up the hill into the straight. Bit of a slide from both cars, trying to put the power down. No way past at the moment for the Mercedes. Although it's such a wide track, that just amplifies the effect of there being one line through it. Cuts the car in nicely, the Mercedes. Now it's a oh, bit of a clip of the barrier there or the wall or something. And that's really upset the Bizzarini. Oh, as they make contact with the wall again, not 100% sure what happened. Maybe some steering damage occurred through that. We'll uh, have to watch as they head into the pit. So definitely some suspension damage must have been picked up there. It's now an hour into the race. So maybe this is where we're going to be seeing our first lot of driver swaps. So let's have a look then. Who else is going to pull into the pit lane as one of the red Mercedes flies through? There's the Bizzarini as well from earlier. 
be interesting to see how much time is lost in a pit stop too. There we go. That's the green Bizzarini that was battling with the Pendry Corvette dips into the pit lane as well. Maybe they thought they were losing too much time sat behind that Corvette and uh, pulls into the pit lanes just to try and get a breather. That's the Series 2 Ferrari GTO pulling out of the pit lane too. And there's also a Maroon E-Type a little bit further back that we haven't yet seen in this race. Five seconds to go then until one hour has passed and we're a quarter of a way through this four hour endurance race and it's still just as exciting as it was on the first lap another one of the corvettes pulls into the pits as it seems like people are going to be doing an hour at a time i don't think we've really seen many other driver swaps if pit stops at all um, until this point but the flow and coyote car uh, that was in the battle for the lead is just going past our cameras now um, they're all the way now down in 12th place. They have made one pit stop, but I believe that was more for repairs. Maybe they refueled at that point as well, just to try prolong the stint a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm very unfortunate for them, but they did have some very, very sketchy uh, uh, lines and a little bit of driving. Not, I don't want to say issues, but they, uh, they definitely uh, had some issues uh, with that car, whether it was after damage, the car being harder to control. But uh, both parties, for the majority, doing a good job and uh, helping to bring that car home. Almost, because uh, of course they've made one pit stop and a lot of the guys in front of them haven't. So they might still be able to claw some time back from that. And if they can alternate their strategy just to try and bring themselves back into this race a little bit, they've definitely got the pace to be at the front of this race. Last lap round, they were a 3.38.4, and uh, that was about three seconds quicker than anybody else around them. So this is definitely going to be one car to keep an eye on uh, for the majority of this race, just to see how much ground they can pick back up. Um, so they've definitely got the pace to do it. It's just about having the consistency to put in lap after lap after lap, just to try and close in and gain as much ground back as they can after their very unfortunate earlier collision. So this is the battle for 16th that we were looking at earlier as well. This is the Van Beek car um, that pitted earlier that was very much in the uh, very much in the battle with James Pendry, uh, their Corvette earlier on. They're now in the battle with this 904 that's ran a little bit wide on exit, but uh, manages to keep it all together. And uh, it seems like we might be able to have some interviews at some point. So we're going to bring in Pitman and uh, see if he would like to have a bit of a chat with us. Hello there, Pitman. How's it all going? Uh, it's good. Uh, who? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, so I'm live on stream now. Ah, luckily, thanks. I I, uh, I was in the waiting room for the. I thought I was in the waiting room for the German channel, but it's okay now. I'm in the English one. Apologies, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, nice. Uh, how, how's the race going for you? Is it good? Hmm. There's definitely a lot of action going on, and that battle for first place over like the first 45 minutes with the five cars was a very, very great watch. Um, yeah, I saw that. And that they had an accident there, or? Yes, the Alfa Romeo, the, the 33, had a bit of a collision. I'm not sure if it was with the 127 Porsche, but uh, we definitely we, there might have been some contact, there might not have been. We didn't have a very good angle for it on the stream. Oh, okay. But um, either way, that put the Alpha 33 out of contention and they had to make a pit stop for repairs and that's dropped them all the way down to 11th place. So they have picked up one place and now they're up to 10th, 9th and they're back up to 6th after passing everybody through pit stops. So hopefully they've adjusted their strategy a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. What about yeah, yourself? I, I, I think so that they would do that. Oh, I see that my uh, teammate is on P5 now. I think cut off the pit stop of the other cars. Um, 
Yeah, there was a, uh, I, I watched the screen and there was one unfortunate situation at the beginning of the race. So when the TV, TV stream car was not uh, teleported back to the pits and uh, I saw that uh, Rolf Bieber crashed into the car. That is uh, very unfortunate because he got an, uh, an additional uh, stop and go uh, penalty because uh, being, cr being crashed too fast into the pit uh, lane after that. So that's very unfortunate. I'm very, very sorry for them that that happened. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I was under the um, pr presumption that that would have not been an issue, but unfortunately it was. So I do yeah. apologize to anybody yeah. that was affected through that. Yeah, no, the, uh, it was not meant like that. So uh, typically in, in, in our streams, we have uh, a script which uh, moves the car back automatically into the pits. And uh, the guys from uh, Virtual Racing who uh, host the stream PCs today, they said that they normally have the same script running, uh, but it was uh, deactivated somehow. So. Uh, I think no one is to blame here. Uh, it just happened, and, uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate, and uh, Rolf will be very disappointed from that, and his teammate too. Yeah, but it happens. Shit happens sometimes. Hey, well, it's your league, so I'm going to presume that you're allowed to swear on the stream. So I'm not going to question that whatsoever. Um, we've, we've currently got eyes on your teammate Margar. Um, what would you sort of rate your performance so far? Of course, you're running top five. I'm not. You haven't pitted yet, though, have you? No, we haven't pitted yet. Uh, he. Uh, I talked to him some minutes ago. He had uh, an, uh, a problem in the first laps. Uh, he was involved in an incident there and lost uh, many positions there. And then uh, he was around 22, 23 or something like that. Uh, and he fought back now. Um, so he drives pretty good. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned that I uh, can keep up his uh, his pace <laughs> when I get into the car. Because uh, I had not that much time to train and practice this week because of all the organizing uh, uh, around this race. But it, it keeps up nice. And here our car is uh, now live on stream. So you can see the black and the blue part of the car. Typically my cars are black, his cars are blue. So we decided to uh, do each, uh, uh, every one of uh, us did a half part of the car. So <laughs> I hope it's okay, it's nice. Definitely a good livery that incorporates both of what you're interested in and uh, of course if you're being a team that's a great aspect to look at. Now you qualify down in 15th place which is roughly mid-pack and very unfortunately as you say you were involved in an incident early on but to bring it back up to P5 and you've got really about a, well a minute gap down to 10th place you should really be looking at an overall net gain or are you looking at a driver swap for this first pit stop? Yeah, yeah, we hope so. Uh, he has to do a pit stop in a, maybe this lap or the next lap, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, then let's see how the driver swap works and uh, how it turns out in the end. But it's good that he um, uh, climbs up the field. Uh, so, but I, I'm not sure how it end, uh, how it will look like um, when he gets out of the pits then. Yeah, it'll be interesting to have a look at, and we'll definitely pick it up on the stream. Um, but it seems like a lot of people going for one hour stints. Is that mainly due to tire wear or fuel? Uh, it depends on the car. They are they are pretty different there. So uh, some uh, I think m most of the cars uh, are, okay, are okay with the tires, uh, but the fuel consumption is very different, um, uh, and the stoppage times are different too. So we tried to level that out, and uh, we tested all cars from this uh, pack on this track uh, for I don't know the number of kilometers, but they are there were plenty of them, um, and we found out that uh, all cars which we have chosen now. Um, that they uh, should uh, uh, end the race within a margin of uh, with, within one lap. So uh, it's pretty much balanced here on this track for the cars. Uh, but you have to use different strategies to get your car uh, around here. And I think the biggest aspect is not to get involved in some incidents here. To, to be fair, we were watching most of the first lap and there didn't seem to be too many collisions. There was the odd one. A little bit further down the field but apart from the uh unfortunate event between the porsche of Jaden and the coyote uh, alpha there wasn't particularly too much to uh worry about at the front of the pack we saw a collision with the number 25 porsche that seemed to have been collected by a few cars uh, heading out of the final corner but really it's been quite clean apart from that yeah that's nice 
Yeah, it's uh, it looks like it look, looks like that on the screen uh, on the stream too. Uh, I saw a crash with a cobra uh, in the first um, right hander with a with a bridge. Um, uh, there was another big one, but um, apart from that, beside from that, it's uh, it's okay. I think yes, yeah. Uh, maybe some words about THR. Of course. Okay, so uh, THR, this is the, uh, the, the community uh, which hosts this uh, race. Um, it's our third endurance race we host. And uh, as uh, I said before the race, um, I was uh, in an interview with you um, also, and I, I said there that uh, THR was founded, has been founded uh, in December 2018. Um, I myself, I'm, I'm a sim racer since I was a kid, so I started with uh, Commodore 64 and uh, s several uh, sim race uh, games um, at that time. Um, and uh, when I grew up, then I uh, had the opportunity to, to drive some real-life uh, go-kart races, but just a few. Um, I liked the sport, but uh, it was I was not able. I, there was no um, possibility to do it as a sport. Um, so I decided to to become a football, a soccer player. Uh, I was a goalkeeper in my team for for several years, uh, and that was my passion at that time. Uh, but when I got uh, older, I get um, over the years, uh, I, I get back to racing uh, every few years, and then uh, in 2017, I think it was uh, a friend of mine, it's Dude Rai. He's also in the uh, uh, in the race here together with Frank Lee, but I don't see him at the time. I don't know. Um, and he came over and said to me, uh, "Let's drive uh, as a Takarda," and we did it for a year together. And then uh, the GPL mod uh, got released from. Uh, but that the GPL mod, uh, which uh, covers the cars from the Grand Prix Legends mod. Uh, Grand, uh, Grand Prix Legends game and uh, the Formula One cars from '67, uh, and I drove the original Dream Legends for uh, for years uh, when it came out in 1998 to to 2002 or something like that. And I deeply wanted to race them, and because uh, um, there were no ser servers up there at uh, that time, I decided to start this community, and that was that was the start of everything. And uh, yeah, since then we grew uh, in Discord. We now have over 1,600 people. Um, there are. I'm aware that that are not real people, many of them, so I think there are uh, robots or something like that, or people who never say anything. But um, we have a good uh, community, we have always fil good filled races, uh, good uh, filled grids in our races. We uh, host several um, championships over the year. Yeah, and it's, um, it's all, uh, it, it's feeling great. So we have a good community and it's, it's great to race against people. Uh, and to, to race against the people you know since months or sometimes since years. And when you face them on track, you nearly always know how they behave. Are they faster than you or slower? Or do they tend to make uh, mistakes under pressure or something like that? Yeah, and that's uh, that's uh, pretty cool to have that in this community. It feels like being being in a, in a real race uh, competition. And yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. It does always help when you know your competition and you can see what their strengths and weaknesses are. Is uh, Some of the drivers in this race I've had the privilege of racing with in the past and uh, you've got a very, very strong field of talent here. So it's great to see that even some of the fastest drivers I know aren't necessarily at the front. So it really just goes to show the, the amount of skill set that you've got within this event. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we are lucky that uh, we have so many drivers. Um from different communities here. So um, in total, we have seven communities uh, competing here. Uh, it's a little bit um, unfortunate that uh, the community names are not shown properly in the standing tower on the left side. Uh, so I um, posted something in the uh, chat uh, on YouTube to explain which community is what, but um, we have three communities, uh, two, two commun three, three communities with a, a we at the beginning. And uh, so it's different to difficult to uh, know which community is in which car. Uh, but I've also linked a spotter guide there, so uh, if you're interested, you can see which cars are on track and maybe you can uh, find them on the spotter guide and to know who, who is who. Most definitely. It's been a very handy tool for us over here at the commentary box. Certain people have definitely put a bit more effort into it than uh, others as we were struggling to talk about certain aspects of drivers due to their let's say creative ways of describing themselves and what we can put out here on stream and yeah. what we can't. so oh, it is definitely a very handy tool for us though as we're currently watching the battle for seventh place which is between the number 32 alfa romeo and the shelby 
Um, they're currently working their way through back markers at the moment, and it's uh, trying to just um, stick with them because we've definitely noticed that the Alpha's a lot quicker in the final sector of the track, and the Porsche seems to be quite a good well-rounder, but that Bizzarini is just, if it's being driven right, it, it's a very, very quick car. Yeah, sure. I struggled with it all, uh, all the weeks uh, before the race. <laughs> I said I don't have uh, enough to, uh, time to practice it, uh, but I really struggled with that car. Um, but uh, yesterday uh, evening I found something in the setup to make it more, um, that it behaves like I uh, wanted to have it on track. So I hope uh, it helps me to, to stay on track uh, later in the race when I get into the car. So thanks, good, thanks good. for the for the for the chance to go, to have a short interview here. Uh, I hope uh, race goes on well. Uh, I was pretty nervous be before the race, um, but uh, it's, it seems that everything is going well, and um, I'm pretty interested in uh, what the drivers will say after the race. <laughs> yes, most definitely, me too. Um, have a great stint whenever that may be. I'm going to presume in about 45 minutes or so, as we saw your teammate go into yep. the pit lane. Yep. Not too long ago, so I presume he's fueling up for another stint, get a fresh set of rubber on and uh, put in some more lap times to hopefully put you in a good position for when it's your turn to jump into the car. Yeah, and I, I hope that I don't mess it up after that. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of second drivers are thinking the same. So Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank Have you very much. See you later. Man. Yeah, thank you too. Bye. Bye. So that was Pitman, who's teammated up with the 12th place car at the moment. That's the number 417, Bizzarini. But the main thing to comment on uh, during that interview, which unfortunately I didn't get to say, was if we look at the leader, you can see how much of a gap that they've managed to pull out. Whether that's due to them not having to pit for fuel due to the smaller engine of that Porsche and just the overall lightness of it. But they've got a minute and a half gap over the flow and Coyote car that's now managed to get themselves back up into second place but theoretically they are half a pit stop behind so we'll have to see how that strategy pulls out there's no cars particularly that close uh, the battle for seventh that we were watching was quite close for a while but the number 26 show we managed to pull away a bit but uh the number 32 alfa romeo uh just a few mistakes here and there dropped them back uh, over a second now. The battle for 13th and 14th seems to be very close. Let's have a look at that. That's the number three Shelby. Bit of American muscle here as they've got the Corvette all over their rear bumper. Whether that was the number three car getting past or defending as there seem to be a fair few swaps for positions there. But they're not particularly too far behind that Marga and Pitman uh, Bizzarini. Although it says uh, eight seconds on the live timing, uh, oh no, I lie, it says two seconds on the live time. I read that wrong, there's so much going on. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a very, very close battle for 12th place at the moment. Uh, but a lot of American muscle, a lot of weight, and a lot of horsepower. They're, or not necessarily to say they're an equal machinery, but a lot of the pros and cons of their cars are going to be the same. So it's all going to rely down to how the driver can uh, pilot their car just whether that be defending or attacking uh this number three shelby we haven't really had a look at much uh throughout the race but this is another car that was uh, representing the thr community this is iii racing um where unfortunately we don't have any driver information on them but we're going to presume that uh, they haven't done a driver swap yet and the first person in the car is fabian fabek um and this is the Shelby Cobra 289 hardtop and uh, they're currently running into a little bit of back market trouble here behind a convertible Shelby who gets it hooked up on the bank and uh, luckily doesn't make contact with the number 788 Corvette behind so they seem to be having a little bit of trouble with their car there but the main story still is Jaden HW in the league uh, in the lead although they haven't pitted yet They've got a one and a half minute gap to second place, one hour 20 into this race. Another battle to look at. It seems to be like these Shelby's are very much 
in the thick of it at the moment. It's the number 131 car against the number 39. They're coming along the yellow back marker that the previous battle that we just watched saw. Uh, oh, as the yellow car has disappeared off of our screen. So not 100% sure where they've gone there. Maybe exit stage left. Who knows? But this is once again another close battle on the track. Although they're not quite nose to tail, it's still two hours and 40 minutes to go in this race. And there's nobody really that much closer apart from the Margar and Pitman car in 12th place to 417 that we uh, had in for an interview earlier. Um, but apart from that, there's not particularly too much on-track action on. However, those two times did seem to cross quite quickly. So let's have a look at this. This is the battle for 21st place between two Bizzarinis. It's the number 740 taxi car and the number 438. So two drivers in equal machinery. Uh, the leader of this particular battle is going to be uh, Myers and Good Smile. I believe they qualified quite well, if I remember rightly. Uh, let me just double check that. But I remember Good Smile being quite towards the top. They were. They qualified in third place. And they're now finding themselves all the way down in 21st. So something much must have gone very wrong there. Is there any three temps off of the pole time? Um, they were one of the three cars within a second. But now they're down all the way in 21st, battling for the very, very low positions towards the back of the grid. But now they're down in 22nd, as the number 438 Bizzarini has uh, managed to get past them. Whether they're struggling with damage or um, anything along those lines, I'm not sure. But visually, the car looks okay. Maybe they just had a bit of bad luck. But uh, the car that just got past them, the... 438 Bizzarini uh, is being driven by Alex and Thomas, uh, which is for VA. Uh, I shall get the full what's it up for one of them. I know I had it somewhere where, where that is. I'm I'm not 100% sure because uh, I've closed the document that I had it on. Um, but either way, they're down. Uh, I say down. They're in 21st place at the moment, but they're uh, making ground through the fields as they get past the uh, third place car, um, the Yellow Cobra, according to the live chat that we have, uh, that's the car that exited stage left uh, not so long ago. They seem to be having a lot of issues with suspension trouble and uh, more issues um, through making contact with the barriers isn't going to help that whatsoever. Back to a battle we were looking at earlier then. This is the battle between the Cobra and the Alfa Romeo 33, uh, the number 26 and the number 14 car, as we finally see, sorry to cut away from this battle, the race leader, Jaden HW, pull into the pit lane. And who has managed to get ahead there? And that's Flo and Coyot back into the lead of the race. But remember, they are approximately half a pit stop behind. That Corvette from early on in the race that we always saw there, rapidly quick, but just making the odd mistake here and there, also got through. Nat and Flashaw in the number 22 Bizzarini now takes the lead of that manufacturer with that Mercedes 300 SL that we've always seen there in the background. Um, also the number 195 car that was temporarily leading the race, but uh, got a little bit swarmed um, after getting overtaken for the lead and ended up a little bit further down the field. But we're yet to see the Porsche rejoin on track, and I would have highly doubt that they had much damage. So maybe they're going for a very long stop here. Um, so they went an, a, nearly an hour and a half um, on the same fuel and tyres. So a great stint from whoever opened that. I'm going to presume it was Jaden, as that's who's the first driver on the list. But uh, a very, very good first stint from them and uh, hopefully they can make some time back up through later pit stops. Right, according to them, the driver swap is done. So that is going to be the, uh, the, the their driver swap sorted, as we can just see now, Jaden HW and Adam Ike. It would be very, very good to uh, grab them in for an interview, but we're going to now grab in Good Smile as they're in the English interview channel and have a chat with them. Hello there, Good Smile. How's it all going? Hello, hello. 
Oh, I'm on stream. Hello. Hello. Let me turn off the stream. I can do briefly. I was going to say, it was a very, very good qualifying from you guys to get that up into third, but uh, yeah. were you involved in any incidents at all, or was it I mean, just I, trying to bring the car I'm not in sure. good condition? I'm yet to drive. I'm soon to swap, so <laughs> this will be a fun race. Have you had any communication at all with your teammate? Um, oh, of, of course, of course. Uh, he's just driving his normal race. Uh, there's nothing special except one uh, blue flag guy that didn't really want him to pass. So, but otherwise, we just had a like a four car vac uh, combo driving for a lot of laps. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, there we go then. It was uh, good to say. What do you know? What roughly time? you're going to get into the car at all? Uh, I'm not sure if... It's like t 10 laps, maybe? In 10 laps. Okay. So roughly towards around an hour and a half to go? Uh, actually, oh, <laughs> maybe maybe closer then. Uh, I think Gregory will take a little longer than half the race. So. Okay. Are you, are you timing your strategy around fueling and tire wear, or uh, is it you've bit. only got set times, or are uh, you for, adapting? For Gregory, I'm, we are just just aiming for so he can drive comfortably, and then I'll wing it uh, in the second stint. Uh, just fueling, fueling takes a lot of time in Bizarini and in other like gas guzzlers. Uh, I wonder if the poor Porsche should take one less stop and a lot less. Uh, time spent fueling, so I, I'm actually uh, surprised there's so little Porsches on the grid. It should be the fastest car by far in the race because of the fuel. Yeah, we have seen uh, Jaden went about an hour and a half before he had to pit, and during that pit stop, they made a driver swap. So there hasn't really oh. been um, any issues. For them in that regard they were really able to make the car last yeah nice um, nice but uh we saw a lot of drivers especially in the american muscle cars and the ferraris pit with about an uh about an hour into their first stint so whether that was for a driver swap or to um just refuel and service their car a bit we we haven't been able to confirm that yet. Yeah, yeah. M most of them should be pretty comfortable on fuel but only i think the alpha is could be really close on on three pit stops, so uh, so if if they mess up, if Alpha messes up, it might need a, another pit stop for fuel splash and dash. Otherwise, yeah, three pit stops for everyone else. Got ya. Well, it's good to have some insight in that, and somebody who's on track and visualizing it all as it's all going on. Mm -hmm. As as much as we'd like to just focus on one car. There was quite a lot going on, especially in the first 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a um, quite a fun fight at the front, and I was like watching uh, with other VAC members uh, our race, so that's cool. Ah, good to hear. If there's anything else, uh, I can answer, but otherwise I will go back to our VAC hive mind. <laughs> we basically drive together and talk uh, during the race, so... It's very good when you've got a little community like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really cool community in, in that sense that we are just, just uh, maybe not the fastest, but uh, drive uh, respectfully and just have fun uh, driving with each other. Ah, good, good. Well, I'll let you go back to do that, and we'll uh, crack on with the commentaries. There's still quite yeah. a bit going on on track. Um, some cars are closing up on position, so we'll uh, get on to that. Yeah, let's go. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.
So then, during that, the uh, battle for sixth place was still as close as ever. No, neither driver really making a mistake or having a flashing pace to close it more than uh, about a second between the cars. But uh, further down the field, uh, we can see the battle for 12th uh, was looking rather good. Um, whether this be with a few back markers involved, but once again, this is the number three car. Uh, trying, I believe that's a back marker, the number 121. One. So they've still got that Corvette behind them, unable to get past them, uh, the back marker. And that's allowed the Shelby now of Nash and... I will have to confirm that. Uh, that is the number 131 car. So we shall get that up briefly. Uh, must have had a bit of an issue because during uh, my time of bringing that menu up, this Corvette of Nash and uh, Medjin, <laughs> the 788 car, has dropped a little bit further back and that's now put them right in the clutches of the 131 Shelby Daytona. One thing to note is that uh, Rogel and Matic currently in second place, uh, 10 seconds off the lead. have put in the fastest first sector of anybody, so uh, we'll definitely see, uh, we should hopefully see that gap close up a little bit for the lead. But uh, a little bit further down, we're seeing the odd personal best, um, especially from Tolanen and Peltonen. Uh, they are in 17th place. They've been in a couple of very good sectors for them, personal bests. Uh, but the Jaden and Adamite car is now 1 minute 45 off the lead due to a very long pit stop. And uh, that's dropped them down to 16th place. But uh, their last lap around was a 3 minute 40.1, which, being honest, is quite similar to the pace of the cars around them. A lot of people in the 340s around that time. Um, but really, the car on the move at the moment seems to be the second place called there of Rogel and Matig. So we're 24 laps into this race. Coming up about, well, we're 28 minutes off of halfway distance. And uh, a lot of the cars are spread out. So we're going to take a bit of a break for now catch up on some water intake and maybe a little bit of food too and we'll be back with you shortly
berbuat. So then, welcome back. We've got two hours and 20 minutes remaining of this race. One thing to note is the number 95 Porsche seems to have been involved in an incident of some kind that did say that they retired briefly. So whether that was a teleportation to pits, I'm not 100% sure, but all they've been doing since then is dropping down the timing screen. That is Capybara Racing, which is Leon Harhoff and Nico Kaluza. Um, a young pairing um, of drivers representing for virtual racing. Uh, they were in a Porsche 9046, same as what Jaden was driving that we saw at the front of the field for the majority of the first hour and a half of the race. Apart from that, it's been quite a close battle, or it was up until we started talking again, um, between the Shelby, the number 26 car, and the Alfa Romeo 33 behind. But it seems like the Shelby is now coming into a bit of back marker trouble but apart from that there aren't really that many cars close on track the gap for the lead has remained about 11 seconds for the majority um, of well really ever since the uh, uh, Alfa Romeo retook the lead but remember once again they are still half a pit stop behind so that's one thing to be wary about but uh, the uh, Chevrolet Corvette in second place is really still holding that gap at around 10 seconds and it has been that for quite a long time the connectural car is still hovering over the rear end of the um nat and i'm on the wrong thingy here uh on the nat and flash uh bizzarini uh they're still within a second and a half they have been closing the gap a little bit last time round they were seven tenths quicker, um, but uh, the leaders still setting similar lap times. Uh, both drivers are pushing. They are setting personal bests, um, but the sixth place car, which is the Piper and Schumer Shelby Cobra 289, they've also been having some good laps, also setting in some very, very good personal bests for them. That's not a million miles off of the lead. Uh, they're in the 39s. Uh, as, as well as most of the cars around them are, so picking up the pace nicely. Um, best lap that we've seen this race is from the leader, which is a 338.028. And the uh, next car that we can see anyway is the fourth place car, which is a free, I don't know, that would be a 339. So the only other car uh, in the 38s is the second place car. Um, actually, I'm mistaken. The uh, Piper and Schumer car also managed to get into the 38s last time round just as they crossed the line they did a 338.5 so the times are starting to tumble a little bit now as people are getting really settled in maybe they've got somebody to follow who's also quick as the uh, Valentin Connection Mercedes uh, behind this third place car is starting to challenge a little bit now they are closing the gap down as we see that battle for 15th also swap places. That's between the Mercedes and another Alfa Romeo. Um, but really, the cars are very vastly spread across the track. We've got cars in every single sector. Um, two going very, very closely around Turn 3. But really, this is the main battle to focus on. The battle for third place is this Mercedes is now all over the rear end of the Bizzarini. With 27 laps now into this race, heading towards the uh, halfway point, which to my calculations is going to mean it's going to be roughly around a 50 lap race. Um, your current race leader is the Alfa Romeo 33 of uh, Coyote, which is the number 272 car. 
Um, but as I've said, they are half a pit stop behind, and they've got a 12-second gap now to the second-place Corvette um, of Roggle. And then it's Nat and Flashaw and the Knitschel and Meister Jaeger Mercedes that we're watching now, the number 22 and the number 92 cars. Getting past that yellow Shelby Cobra 289 that we've seen a lot of. Um, just everybody trying to get past it safely. Doing a very good job to get out of the way most of the time. Uh, have reports of a few little instances, but uh, nothing particularly too major whatsoever. Unfortunately, we don't have anybody in here to interview, so if you are a driver and you are watching the stream and you speak good English, then uh, feel free to drop on into the interview waiting channel. Uh, it would be great to have a chat with Jaden and uh, discuss his first stint, as it was a uh, a bit of ups and downs, qualified it on pole, but dropped down to fifth at one point and then worked their way back up through the field. And after that, because they've done a driver swap now too. So after their driver swap, they are now running in P14, uh, holding a steady gap to the leader of around 146, 147. But they are closing in on everybody around them. So doing a good job. Um, overall to be consistent, but you can see how much that Bizzarini has pulled out in a straight line, and now Valentin has got to do it all over again to try and gain some time back in sectors two and three. Nothing really to note on the live timing. Everyone is just setting consistent laps. Um, still, we've got a big variation in top speed, but that has to be expected with everybody in different cars. And there's a, a very big train of the field, especially in Sector 3 at the moment. And that seems to be a lot of the guys from about 18th downwards. And there's quite a lot of tightness in the pack at that particular point. But uh, I think what we'll do is we'll head over to the leader and then watch most of the pack come through at a set camera point. So we'll wait for a good one, hold it on uh, the F7 camera and watch most of the field come through, maybe down into one of the heavy braking zones, like what we're coming up to now under the bridge. So there goes your leader at the moment. That's the Flow and Casual Alfa Romeo. Then here we have one of the Shelbys. That's the red and blue American flag car. Uh, another one of the Corvettes. That is second place. That is the Roggle number 36 car. And then we've got a bit of a wait, and it should be the Nat and Flashor and this battle here, the Bizzarini and the Mercedes 300 SL of uh, Valentin Knitschel and Meister Jaeger. I believe they are the same teammates that also ran in um, the uh, 2.4 hour of Le Mans at the Grand Circuit. Well, this battle is the closest on track, and it's for the podium, so it's got a little bit more of importance too coming up to the halfway point in this race. Mercedes getting a good run on the Bizzarini through the tighter corners, hooking the wheel into the guttering on the inside, going back round for the outside. We'll see if he can carry it round. Bizzarini get both of them very sideways through there, trying to get the power down. Uh, the Bizzarini makes it out a bit further ahead than they went in. Uh, both of them staying pretty similar gaps. Uh, I think it will probably be a long slog up to the straights. Very similar paced cars, these couple of kilometres an hour in between them towards the straight. Uh, 255 kilometres an hour, both of them reaching pretty much. But it really does look like it's hooked down better and is pulling a bit of a gap. A couple of black markers. Got a back marker to contend with there that all could be on the racing line, but manages to knock it up to speed enough for that to be an issue for these two cars in the lead, uh, in this third place battle, I should say. Uh, the 22 doing a good job using its advantages 
uh, with slightly more, better, maybe better aerodynamics to gain a bit of a gap. Great long right hand and corner this. And uh, we can see the Mercedes Huge with the headlights man. blazing in the background. That's managed to pull over, is that over a second gap now? Um, over the Mercedes. So some great aerodynamics, maybe a little bit more power too. And uh, once again, the Merck's got it all to do to try and close it up through sectors two and three. Huge gap over the street. A little bit further down in the pack, we can see that battle for 11th and 12th is spicing up a little bit too. Those cars are getting quite close, as well as the battle for 13th. Whereabouts Jaden has got to. They're still in 14th. And they are closing up onto the back of 13th. So let's have a look at them. These were your race leaders at one point in the race. But due to a very long pit stop. With there being a driver swap. This is most likely now Adamike 99 driving the car. Um, what lap times they're setting. Uh, hopefully my co-commentator can find out. We're after the 14th place car of Jaden HW. What are they setting in terms of a 338. Uh, 338.9. So still quicker than most of the field doing at the moment. But pretty average on the current pace. Still about a second off their quickest lap time though. So I wonder if their tyres are struggling or they're on a heavy fuel load still. Uh, they've probably got another hour of their stint I reckon. Um, just keeping it nice and clean by themselves, trying to get through the back markers without any uh, mishaps. Uh, it's all going well. <laughs> yeah, um, it's been a bit of an up and down, really, for that number 127 car. Um, of course, with their long pit stop, it really puts them off a little bit in regards to perspective of where you're actually at, because you've got cars running different strategies that are capable of running longer and shorter stints. A uh, bit of a slide there, almost making contact with the wall, but managed to keep it all together. But you've basically, you've got a lot of cars that can run longer or shorter stints, depending on their fuel load. Um, it really depends on the weight of their car, the size of the engine, the power, all that sort of stuff. And uh, it really, for this middle half of the race, kind of throws everybody off because you, you might see Jaden, if you're just coming into the stream now, they're down in fourth place to side our classic team car. But for the first 45 minutes, they were in a very intense battle for the lead. Decided to make a driver swap about an hour and a half in, which was their first pit stop. Because they had about a minute gap over second place just from not being able or not having the need to pit yet. And uh, Adamike's doing a very good job just to try and claw some places back back up through the field. But retrospectively to everybody else around them, if they're in the 339s, everybody else is doing 342s, they are gaining about three seconds a lap. So we should be able to see big slide there at the uh, apex of the corner. We should be able to see them claw up back through the field. However, now seems to be the time for the second load of pit stops. So. The Nat and Flashor Bizzarini is in the pits as we see everybody else pile past them. Um, and uh, we'll have a look on the start finish line now to see how far behind everybody else is. But we should see a couple cars coming to shot now. So there's quite a close battle here. Uh, it seems to be one of the Ferraris, and that's the red Mercedes that we haven't really seen much of on the stream. It's definitely been more towards the front. There's the Alpha 33 and the green Bizzarini that was battling with the Pendry Corvette earlier on in the race. Another 300 SL that we haven't seen much of either. Um, but uh, apart from that, the pack is quite well spread out. Here comes that yellow uh, Shelby into the pit lane as well, maybe having to repair for, for damage again, having to reverse as they miss their pit box in the pit lane. Whether that's legal or not, we're not 100% sure. But uh, one of the pink cars as well in the pit lane seems to be having a few issues too. As most of the pack rolls through, we can see that Jaden, through pit stops, the Adamike Side Heart Motorsport car, has managed to get up to 12th through those pit stops. So we should be able to see that car work through the field. But uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it most definitely. As nobody else really seems to be that close. 
uh, apart from the 6th and 7th place battle. This is between the Alfa Romeo 33 that we saw battling with the number 26 Shelby um, for the majority, really, of the race up to now. So maybe a mistake from them, or they both pitted at the same time and one was able to uh, have a slightly quicker stop. But now they've got to deal with this Bizzarini right behind them. Uh, the GT5300, and they're really quite keen to get past, putting their nose in quite a lot of places, really filling up the mirrors, and uh, no real places to overtake at this part of the track. Going defensives, kind of go slightly wide on exit. Now you're going to scrub some more speed off, massive slide from the 33, just a little bit too much weight transfer, and now the Bizzarini is going to have to try and go around the outside. Not possible here. Cuts the car back into the corner, tries to build up some more momentum. And now they're going to go into the left-hander, down the hill, under the bridge, into the, uh, one of the heaviest braking zones on the track. Can they get it stopped? We'll have to wait and see. A little bit more straight as they come over the crest. Car's going to go light, got more prone to locking the brakes. Bit of a slide. Bit of a corner cut too, a little bit sloppy, but kept it all together. And now they're into sector three, which is all about slow uh, corners. But we can see that the Nat and Flashor Bizzarini, the number 22 car, they've completed their driver swap. And that has brought them out in 23rd place. Three minutes, 20 seconds off of the lead. However, that is their driver swap complete. So it should be two since now to the end of the race. And then that is them uh, sorted for their or sorted their strategy for the remainder of the race. Coming up to the uh, Ferrari 250, which is the number eight car, which is the second place of the Ferraris at the moment. Um, as there doesn't seem to be too many Ferrari 250s running in this race, we've got the number 76 car, which is down in 27th place. And the number eight car that's just let the Alfa Romeo go through and, uh, on your screen. They're down in 30th at the moment. So not been a particularly great showing uh, from the Ferraris, whether that be due, due to a car disadvantage or we shall um, see them come on a little bit later on in the race. But one thing to note is Jaden, uh, or I should say Adamike in the Porsche 904, has managed to get past the Chevrolet Corvette uh, in the slow sector three. However, if that Corvette can keep it all together, it might give Adam Mike some trouble in that smaller engine Porsche on the run into the first corner. All lap times do seem to be quite consistent at the moment. Everyone's in the groove. Nobody really setting faster times. It's all orange sectors, um, but that is to be expected with the tyres slightly going off. So we see the uh, Sideheart Classic Motorsport car gain a, another position from the pit stop of Mass Day. Um, but as I've stated, the 788 car is now really carrying a lot more speed than the Porsche 904 down in this tumbling section of corners a very very quick sector one can the corvette go around the outside of the porsche and challenge into the first heavy braking zone on the track that is the question Jaden's going to hug the inside the corvette's trying to go for the outside if they want to hold on to this place they've got to be ahead into this heavy braking zone but i'm not sure if they are quite enough is Jaden? uh is the adamite gonna try and dive back down no all the corvette runs wide and that is Adamite back through into 10th place. A little bit of sloppy driving there then from the Corvette. Briefly had the place back but couldn't quite get the car stopped in time. And now they've got a big disadvantage for sectors 2 and 3 due to the nature of the car. And uh, that's really released the classic side heart motorsport Porsche on a bit of a rampage now. As they've only really got... Well, 15 seconds to the next car. However, they shouldn't have to pit for really approximately another hour. So we'll have to see how much ground they can make up. The Pendry uh, Corvette is now back up to 16th due to pit stops. And the Flo and Coyote car is uh, also catching up to what seems to be back markers. 
this yellow Shelby doesn't seem to be very contempt on letting them go past. So Flo and Koyo, if you are just tuning into the stream now, were leaders of the race, but uh, unfortunately had a couple of mistakes early on that really dropped them back. Then they got damaged and had to make a pit stop early. And uh, that's why we saw them leading the race um, for a certain stint of time due to the overlap in pit stops. And they've now dropped back down to 15th, unfortunately. Uh, another battle that we're going to have a look at is the battle for sick, which is back with the Alfa Romeo 33 with the Bizzarini GT5300. Both of these cars have V8 engines. The Alfa Romeo only has a 2 litre engine, uh, and the Bizzarini has a 5.5 litre V8. So a very large power difference of about two to three hundred horsepower between the two cars. Um, but obviously the weight and the layout proves to make a big difference, especially within the final sector. The Alfa Romeo a lot quicker than the Bitserini uh, up until the final straight where the Bitserini should uh, make up most of the ground again. We might see an overtake towards the end of these straights. Uh, well, the Alfa Romeo's pulling oh, into the pit lane. <laughs> so that is, as expected, about an hour per stint as we watch the Ferrari of Spaghetti Racing drive past. Uh, they now move up to third. No, they do stay in 30th. We've just now got access to 31 drivers on the leaderboard instead of 30th. And here we see the pit stops then. So it's really going to shuffle up the field. So, as expected, most cars really last about an hour, whether that be mostly on fuel, but could be a little bit of tyres too. Um, but, one thing that we must have missed is this battle for second place. Mm. The number 26 car and the Bizzarini, uh, the number 195. This is, uh, we've seen a bit of this number 26 Shelby, actually. They've uh, put on quite a good show. They did have quite a big battle with the Alfa Romeo that we just saw pit uh, early on in the race and they've been a little bit of a dark horse managing to claw their way back up through the field whether that be due to other people's demise or anything to that extent they've uh, kept it consistent kept it clean although there is a little bit of damage into that over that Shelby there's um, been some good drivers in that car whether they've performed their driver swap yet not a hundred percent sure but they've kept it consistent kept it clean and uh, done a very good job and are now currently fighting for second place in the race. To be fair to them, I believe they've done the second quickest lap of the race so far with a 3 minute 38.5. Only quicker car is doing 3 minute 38.1s and that was the leader uh, before they pitted. So they are pretty, pretty good on pace. Uh, so it should be pretty easy for them to get away from this bit Serena as it goes very sideways out with that hairpin. I'm quite surprised of how well this Shelby's handling these corners. It's not very out of shape, so the drivers are doing a very good job. Uh, I assume the tyres probably quite fresh, although I don't know when they last did their pit stop. 15 laps ago, so doing a very, very good job. Um, 15 laps ago is approximately going to be about 40 minutes here. So it should be coming up to their next stop, I would have thought. Should be around at that time. Yeah, maybe in a couple laps we'll see that car go back into the pit lane. Overall, the leader's done 32 laps of this race. And uh, it's really still uh, anyone's, especially... Well, we've, we've seen where... Uh, whereabouts is Jaden now? The, or the Jaden Sidehart Motorsport car is running in eighth. Ninth. Uh, is it my, ninth, ninth, on the the timing ninth on the live timing, eighth on our leaderboard, so maybe that hasn't quite updated yet. But uh, we've seen that car lead the race by over a minute, and now they're down a minute. So they have done their one needed driver swap for the race. As I've said, it would be great to get Jaden in this voice chat to uh, have an interview with him. Um, but... Whether that's the case or not, we, we're not sure. We haven't really had anybody in for the English interviews. A lot of people want to do German ones, which is fair enough. I understand that the THR is a uh, very German-orientated community. Uh, we have had the odd one, of course. Pitman himself came in earlier. We've also had Good Smile 
um, to who I explained the situation on how they qualified third, but unfortunately they're a little bit further down the grid, but they are running a consistent race. Uh, another battle that we might have to look out for is the two Bizzarinis battling for fifth and sixth. There's only 1.2 seconds between them, but uh, what about the battle they pull into the pits? What about the Margar and Pitman car then? Yeah. So I believe this is Pitman, and they've got that number three Shelby uh, behind them, and then that number eight back marker Ferrari 250, uh, one of the very few Ferraris that we see running in this race. So I do believe this is Pitman at the wheel, who is the admin of THR. What were their lap times last time around? Uh, their last lap was a 3.42, so two seconds off of their quickest lap so far. But for the Bitsarinis, that's a pretty average time for this point in the race. Uh, fairly new tyres, though, for them. Oh, no. Is, has Pitman got in the car yet? I'm not sure. If he, if it's, it's been 14 laps since their last stop. Maybe Pitman so, is in the car, though. Maybe it's still Marga. 14 laps would have been an hour or so ago. Uh, so, if we're two laps in mean, the, two hours into the race and we've done 33 laps, then, yeah, that would be about an hour ago. Yeah. I don't know when we last <laughs> spoke to Um... But yeah, pretty good times from them anyway, uh, regardless of who is in the car at the moment. Uh, once they get some fresh tyres on, they should be back up to their 3 minute 40 pace. Um, just keeping it clean, staying out of any problems, playing it a little bit safe, not pushing it too hard, uh, because there is still two hours to go. We've only just barely reached the halfway point. Um, yeah, nice and clean from them. Yeah, it has been a very consistent race from these guys. They have been a little bit up and down through the field, but they've managed to uh, bring it back as they're catching up to one of the backmarker Porsche 904s that we believe had an incident early on in the race, and that dropped them quite far back. Um, I think completely off of the timing sheet uh, that we've got on the left-hand side of our screen. But they were running in the top 20, and then they had some sort of issue and that drops them quite a way back. So whether they're a lap down or not, they are, I'm going to presume they are a lap down. They run very wide to let these two cars through and make no uh, inconvenience for them whatsoever. And the number 95 cracks back on with his race. But uh, these two, this is the battle for fourth place. Uh, the Shelby 289 hardtop. Uh, against the Bizzarini. Oh, the Shelby's looking for the inside. A very bold, aggressive move. And the number 17 is out very, very wide. On the number 417, I should say, because they've got number 4 on one side, 17 on the other, but there are number 417 on the server. So, as Pitman stated earlier, this is a combination of two liveries, ones that uh, uh, Marga usually runs and the other side being one that Pitman usually runs. So that's why they've got four on one side and one seven on the other. But uh, it was a very clean, well, I wouldn't say clean, it was a very aggressive manoeuvre. No contact was made, but that Shelby has uh, really pulled a bit of a gap and they've now got a second and a half lead heading on to the home straight. One thing to note is that the Valentin Canitral Mercedes has gone into the pits. So whether that's for a driver swap, um, I don't really know. But one thing to note is that the number 26 car is now in the lead of the race, the Shelby uh, 289 hardtop. And they've only got a second and a half uh, to second place behind. But that gap's going to get even bigger with driving like that. That's not what you want to do. Very, very sideways. And the gap's now over two and a half seconds. And uh, that's really not what you want to be doing. But one person that we will have a look at is Jaden HW and Adamike 99 in the Porsche 9046 because uh, they were leading the race at one point and they shouldn't have to pit for another 50 minutes. So they're up, back up to fourth place, making good progress. They're now only a minute and 10 off of the lead. Whereas uh, after their first stint, they were 1 minute 45, 46. So they've managed to pull back 35 seconds to the lead, doing a good job. And we've got that uh, group of cars, 5th, 6th and 7th, 
all in the pit lane as Marco and Pitman have pulled in to do their driver swap. This is the number 10 uh, Mercedes that we really haven't had a look at much of this race, but they've always been up the front. This is of Heinrich Ward and John Lindholm. Uh, they're representing for CVR under the bloody Wartburg racing. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that's meant as a swear word, more the colour red. We're going to go with that to keep it uh, family friendly. But they're a small Finnish team, uh, mainly driving on the Assetto Corsa simulator with a preference for older cars, uh, which really is a perfect event for them. And I presume that's why they have turned up. But they're currently either doing a pit stop or a driver swap. As uh, we see a lot of cars fly through the picture at the bottom. But the only thing is now is we've uh, got a lot of people on the plus one lap. So it's quite hard to gauge where everybody really is off of timing. Um, because usually you get the delta between cars. But what this does mean is that now uh, approximately, really over 20 of the drivers are one lap down. So it just goes to show... Who the class of the field is but yes uh, as confirmed we have now had the connection uh mercedes do their driver swap and that is the uh roggle uh corvette getting past them the number 36 car so another battle that we saw early on in the race is resurging and um hopefully once this mercedes gets up to speed Although it will struggle to try and match the speed of that uh, Corvette, we should be able to see a bit of a battle going on here uh, for 7th place. And of course, the Nat and Flash or uh, Bizzarini behind is only 2 seconds off them. So really between 7th and 9th place, we've got less than 5 seconds uh, over 2 hours into this race. See the Margar and Pitman. Bizzarini is still in the uh, still in the pit lane. I oh, know they've just come out now. And one thing to note is both of the race leaders, that's the 195 Bizzarini, is um, in the is doing their driver swap. So the Spaghetti and Gashi uh, number eight Ferrari 250. Uh, although they're so far down the field, we seem to be covering them quite a lot. Spaghetti racing. Uh, they are just doing their second driver swap now as we see the number three Shelby take the lead of the race as we are yet to see uh, a completed driver swap. But what about Jade and HW? Whereabouts are they going to come out? They're just coming up the hill now uh, across the start finish line and we're still yet to see second and third place. So could this see... Jaden get back on, or Adamike, I should say, get back onto the podium. Yes, it will, with one hour and 48 to go. Still most likely one round of pit stops to do, but uh, it really just shows you can be down in 15, 10 minutes ago, and uh, now you're all the way back up the second, and they shouldn't have to pit for another approximately 40 minutes. So their final pit stop should tie in with everybody else's, and at that point, we'll get a very realistic representation of where everybody's at. We're going to take a short break just to top up on refreshments, and we'll be back with you shortly.
So we would like to welcome you back to the THR Four Hours of Deutschland Ring. If you were watching the stream, you would have seen the Bizzarini, uh, the number 22 car of Nat and Flashor, get past the Corvette. Uh, but shall we see the uh, greater power of the Corvette help close them up into the first sector? Not 100% sure. We've also got the Mercedes 300 SL of Meister Jaeger and uh, Valentin Knitschul hanging on to the rear end of this group that we've seen for many parts throughout this race. Uh, have a great set of battles but uh we had we do have somebody in the interview room and that is Jaden hw a uh very strong driver in the first half of this race so we're going to bring him in and have a chat and see what his first stint was uh, all about Hello? Good evening, Jaden. Or good morning for Hello. you. How's it all going? This is going very well, thank you. How, so you've how have you been? Yeah, not too bad. It's been quite good to commentate, and uh, your first stint was very strong. Yeah, it was. Oh, that was such a fun stint. Uh, I mean, the start was a bit sketchy because uh, I thought we would have a good launch of the line, but it seems like the run up the hill, the power, we got kind of swamped. Um, but so mostly it was just about hanging, just keeping touch, but not uh, not trying to attack the other cars in front, just to give them space to battle or whatnot. Um, fortunately, I didn't uh, quite expect to be overtaken round turn three um, by the Mercedes and the Corvette, so that caught me out a few times, and and obviously I had to fight uh, back. Um, but yeah, the battling was really fun, and uh, uh, yeah, so I don't know what to say. We did pick up on the stream that we thought you were hanging back a little bit because as soon as you got into the position where you were fighting for the lead, so you were in second place, and I believe it was uh, who I you can tell me who it was in the lead. Oh yeah, it was Franco Cajot in the car. At yes, the time. In, in the blue Alfa Romeo, wasn't it in the number th in the thirty three? I remember as soon as it was just you two, you were you caught on like a second a lap, two seconds a lap. Whereas if you have three or four cars in between you, you're just playing the waiting game, being patient and uh, allowing everybody else to just create their own mistakes and then get a free position, which I thought was yeah, very smart. I, I thought, yeah, I figured that the, at least the early stint uh, battle would be between the, me and the Alpha rather than the other cars because I think even then, the even once those other cars pit, they'd be... Um, they'd have a larger fuel tank and then they'd take longer to refuel. So they'll be, they would have been out of the picture even by the pit stops. But once we did get past, then then I was like, okay, all gloves off. I'm going to try to take the lead back. Um, got a bit hairy at times because uh, I feel I figured he was win running into tire wear issues down the hill. So he, br he was dying to break a lot earlier than I expected and caught me out once, touched the wall, didn't do much damage. Uh, and then he he did spin, uh, and I almost ran into him, but I, was, I just had to hold the brakes and and hope it hope it turned in. So, yeah. So at the, at the point where the flow and coil car did eventually finally spin off and create a bit of a mess of their car, there wasn't any contact at all. I, I we couldn't get a good view of that on the stream at the time. I, I saw um, the stream. Yeah, I saw I saw the stream. It's like I, the angle did look could look like we did touch, but no, he he went off uh, all of his own, and we were just but we were just running so close together because I guess we just had we had enough trust in each other that we, that um that we could run that close. And also, I wanted to intimidate him a bit. So, so some of the moves that you two were pulling were rather great to see. Um, not not something that you'd expect to see in a four-hour endurance race, that's for sure. No, uh, yeah, it was more gloves off than I expected for the first hour of a race, but but I mean it's it's all good fun. Uh, and these cars uh, can seem to just take a bit of a beating uh, as as long as you don't like uh, absolutely smack it into a wall. But yeah, yeah. So there was about a five-way battle, wasn't there, for about the first. 45 minutes or so um, between you, the Corvette. There were five different car brands in the top five. Um, oh, yeah, I love that. It was, yeah, sorry, sorry, I cut you off. No, it's okay. Um, and it was just great to see that many different cars 
all fighting and showing their pros and cons because that alpha looks so strong in the final sector, whereas your Porsche was very strong in sector two and everything else would just drive past you in a straight line. So yeah. it's great to see the pros and cons of every car and how visually it was portrayed. Yeah, I, and I, I, I wish that, I, I believe the, the Porsche does actually have like a lot of front and lift at high speed. So, so it, that actually compounds the, ish, the high speed cornering issues even more in sector one. Uh, it's, it's in sector two that I've, I've managed to, to adapt my driving to be able to, to get it through. Um, and a lot of setup work to, to cancel out that understeer. Um, but uh, but yeah, the Alpha is definitely a very fast car overall. Um, but then it's surprising to see how many of the front engine cars have have picked up pace over like the few weeks that I've been seeing people drive. So it's been great to see that, and 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 also to be uh, overtaken a few times. It was a bit of a shock, but uh, but a definitely a pleasant one because that definitely. Um, uh, extended the battle and, and gave it uh, gave me a little bit more to do so yeah as, as I said on the stream having raced against you personally in the past I know of what, what a great skill level you're at and the fact that there are five other teams maybe even six really looking at the lap times just involved in incidents who can all match that really high standard of pace and driving it just goes to show the great potential um and skill set that has managed to be collaborated for this event. Yeah, for sure. I I I, I love this this community. Um, just with the classic racing. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's something that I hadn't really been able to touch um for a few years. But and then find this community and being able to do it here is a great thing. Um, I still I still fondly remember my time at CRS, just ba battling in the uh, eighty eight F one cars or the. Bang doors and BTC cars. The that uh, uh, BMW three three one eight I drove in the nineties. Yeah, 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 yeah. Night three, sorry, that was a that was a great battle. I love that. The, I still, just... I think I had one of my best qualifying uh, performances ever. It was in the top ten shootout event at Donington. I took the I took the pole at the last lap, so I remember that fondly. It really goes to show that you can just adapt yourself to any situation or vehicle and perform well, which is, as a driver, a very, very strong uh, ability. And it's great to see that really whatever you jump in, you're at the front and you're quick, as I personally like to call you a quite good friend. So even though we don't particularly talk that much anymore, the battles that we have had on track and definitely are going to have on track in the future, uh, definitely some great memories to have in the sim racing world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, there we go. Thank you very much for your time, Jaden. Is there anything else you would like to say regarding the strategy of your team? Because we noticed that um, really you could go about half an hour longer than anybody else in terms of strategy. Yeah. So are you hoping that will bring everything together for the final hour where everybody pits and then we can finally see really the realistic outlay of the grid? We should. Be, we are able to do about 80 minutes on, on every stint, 22 laps. Um, so that should bring us to the end of, end of the race um, uh, with just two stops, including the driver swap. So I believe Adam is he either has done, or no, he is, he will do his um, pit stop soon, um, and then that will be it. So unless unless of course we have to do like some emergency stop for fuel, either fuel or tires or, or, or repair, I guess. But but yeah, um, so it is a big advantage of the Porsche. Um, it's a, but of course, those a lot of other cars around us can can run pretty quick. Um, uh, or um, so it will be interesting to see how how it will play out for the rest of the race. Yeah. So because currently you're leading the race by over a minute, but whether that will tie in with everybody else's pit stops or not, because of course you've got a longer pit stop time, it'll be uh, interesting to see. As I said when we hit that final hour mark when really everybody's finished with their pit stops and it's just a one hour sprint to the end um, it'll be great to see where really everybody pans out because we've got a few names that we've seen at the front that are kind of all over the field really um, so yeah it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where everybody pans out and see if you can hold on to that lead because the second place car of Flo and Kajot have literally just pitted now as we've been talking 
and uh, they're down in second place. But of course, they had their incident, and then that kind of knocked them half a pit stop out, having to repair for damage. So it'll be very interesting to see, as you say. Yeah, I, re I reckon uh, I've, I've seen some of the lap times by Flo, uh, who's in the car now, and I'm a little concerned that, that, that maybe they'll, even despite the, the um, uh, ex escapades, that they'll better catch us by the end. But, um, but Adam, uh, he's got, he's still a little shaky. I think he did have a spin, uh, mid, like uh, early in his first stint, but um, he is gaining confidence. Uh, and I've seen the lap time starting to fall. So I think we should be good because we'll have one, we we'll only have one pit stop to do. And um, and we'll be just uh, try to keep the lead, be consistent, no mistakes, what, whatnot. So yeah, hopefully we'll hold up to the end. Great to hear. So Adam Mike's going to be in the car for the rest of the stint or the rest of the the race, and uh, or are you going to do one more driver swap? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, no, uh, it, it, we'll just keep Adam in the car, yeah, because the driver swap is three minutes, so we want to keep um, save as much time as possible. So yeah. Got it, yeah. Okay, great to hear. Well, thank you very much for your time, Jaden, and uh, yeah, best no of luck to you for the remainder of the race. All right. See ya. Bye. So then that was the teammate of your current race leader who put in a very strong first stint in the 127 Porsche 904. They currently have a lead of one minute and three seconds over the rest of the pack. But as we stated during that interview, that uh, might that might switch up a little bit when we hit the one hour mark in half an hour's time. Um, we are getting a little bit tired for sure in the commentary booth. We're over halfway through the race now heading towards the two-thirds mark. One thing to note is we've seen some very quick lap times from the second place Alfa Romeo 33, uh, with the first driver being able to get into the three minute 37.6s. Uh, I think the next fastest lap time has been from your race leader, uh, Adam Mike 99 is in a 338.1. So although it's only half a second, getting into the 337s is definitely quite a strong point. But you can really see Adam Ike's just wheeling this Porsche, chucking it into every corner um, at full will and uh, hoping it sticks, really using all of the track to his advantage. This looks like a great fun corner. You slingshot it out the left, dive on the brakes to get it rotated, chuck it in the right and then try and keep the rear end in check. And Adam Ike's doing a very good job of that. A little bit further down the field. Uh, we don't seem to have too many battles going on at all. Looked like there was a position swap. There was indeed further down. This is between the number 96 Mercedes and the yellow Shelby uh, 289 hardtop, uh, the number two car. Uh, we haven't seen much of this car all stream. There is another yellow 289, but that uh, doesn't have a roof on it. This is uh, driven by Mutram and Tendil. Uh, the, the SR, the SRO Outcasts, not sure if I've pronounced that right at all, but they're from THR and they're currently running in 21st. Should be looking at a pit stop in approximately half an hour. That's what we've seen from most of the other Shelbys. Um, but uh, according to their team, they've driven together for many years and against each other in very, very different uh, leagues, machineries, whatever that may be. One of them being from France, one of them being from the UK. And uh, that's uh, quite obvious to figure out, isn't it? When you've got Tendil, uh, Maxime Tendil and Tim Mutram, um, uh, or Mutram, however you want to pronounce it. I'm sure that's rather obvious. But uh, great to see these two guys on the stream. Very classy livery. And a low number car, the number two. Big white roundels on the side of the car. They're coming up to the number 95 blue Porsche who uh, had a bit of an incident at some point in the race, and that really dropped them a little bit further down. But uh, apart from that, the next closest battle on track is going to be this number 10 red Mercedes, uh, the bloody something racing. That's uh, bloody referring to red, of course. We've already made this joke during the commentary. But uh, they've got the blue number 26 Shelby behind, running into a few issues with... Uh, not necessarily back markers uh that's no that is back markers i do apologize my misreading of the live timing it's uh, getting a little bit monotonous looking at the same thing for the uh, last two and a half hours but the shelby's carving its way through 
uh, Bizzarini's, but unfortunately lost a little bit of time from that. Very, once again, another classy livery, very period correct from this Mercedes. A lovely red colour um, with a big white round on the side, number 10. And uh, yeah, doing a good job to hold on to eighth place. Uh, this is the second highest place. Mercedes, uh, with the next one up to Phil being in fourth place, the number 92 car, uh, which has seen quite a lot of action from. That's Valentin Connectual and Meister Jaeger. But overall, everyone just not necessarily in a case of trying to bring the car home, but there aren't particularly too many battles for position at this point. It's just, uh, yeah trying to put yourself in a good position for the final stint whether you're doing one more driver swap or not who knows but uh, that will be down to each individual team another close battle on track is the battle for fourth position which is as we stated earlier this number 92 car uh with that red and white corvette chasing him just like it has really been since the start of the race these two have almost been inseparable but uh, they're still going at it, whether there be a little bit of a gap between them. That might be the number 25 Porsche behind them as well. Uh, involved in an incident early on around the one hour in mark where they were collected by quite a few cars, unfortunately. And that dropped them a little bit uh, quite far down the grid, really. They're down in 28th at the moment, two laps down. But uh, that Matt Gray Porsche is still hanging on to the back of this battle for fourth place, just unfortunately a couple laps down from it. So then we should be looking in approximately 10 minutes for the leaders to come into the pits. Uh, we do have an interview awaiting, so we'll have a quick chat with them. Good Hello. evening, how's it all going? I'm doing fine, man. I'm here uh, to speak for Kamikaze. And uh, yeah, I actually just want to update uh, the viewers on the state of our team. Uh, currently, Flo is doing his best. Although uh, there may be a drop off in pace in the future, as in he may be struggling with the internet connection, which isn't optimal. He's also uh, having signs of a stroke, which is suboptimal, for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I'd agree. Yeah, he, it's good to see he's got his priorities straight. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. He also smells burning, which, I mean, mm -hmm. should be fine. I mean, he is driving now for a man. Yeah, so, he is. Makes yeah. sense. You yeah, know? that could that could be the reason. Yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah, the the team is uh, is working very hard. They're helping him. They're supporting him. He's, uh, he's trying his best. He's driving his heart out. Like the legend that he is. And I... We firmly believe that he has the pace to go for the win. If you observe the gap closely, he's been actually getting close to add the mic. Which... That's... That's amazing from him. He's doing an amazing drive. Amazing job. Uh, so Coyote... looking at his lap times last time around, he was half a second quicker. No, I lie. He was two seconds quicker than the race leader, so got a yeah. lot of pace, and uh, it looks like there's going to be one more pit stop from everybody um, in in the remainder of this race, and that Porsche does have a longer pit stop time than most of the other cars, so this could play into your favour, but we'll have to see what happens in approximately 25 minutes' time. Yeah, I, I hope you just get a good pit stop in. The, the pit crew has been working very hard to get the tires ready. And yeah, I just hope I just hope it goes well. well. We can see how hard he's pushing. We're watching him drive around now yeah. and he's really trying to maximize every single millimeter of the track. And he's, uh, he, he's insane. He's definitely insane. Is, is there any what, regarding, unfortunately, the mistake earlier that dropped him out of the lead? Um, was was there much damage sustained through that? Or no, I we, saw that we went into the pit, or that you went into the pits almost straight after. We had a pit stop. It was it went decently. We had a little bit of time in the pit stop lost, but uh, it's okay. It's an endurance race. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Exactly. Yeah, it's very true. And 
good to see he's been putting in quick, consistent times as well that uh, hopefully will all pay off. Yeah, it definitely will. I know, I know him since I was a child, and he's he's absolutely wicked. I mean, the the pace that he can extract from a vehicle is is insane. Like, well, I believe currently he has the fastest lap of anybody during this race, and uh, although it's one of the slowest top speeds on a straight line, it really shows how much he's getting out of the car in the slower sections and through the corners. Yeah, the the feeling for grip that he has is so precise. It's so amazing. I wish I had his skills. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah, well, I we'll, think we'll that's... We'll definitely keep an eye on it. And uh, he's setting quick, consistent times. And that gap now to the lead is under one minute. So we'll definitely keep an eye on it and uh, see if anything comes from it in approximately 20 minutes once we've uh, had all of the pit stops. Yeah, that was it. Uh, have, a, have a nice time, mister. I'll, Thank you very uh, much. You too. Yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye. So one thing to note is the third place car of Nat and Flashor is setting personal best sectors. Uh, they're on a little bit of a move at the moment in third place. The highest place Bizzarini car. But as Jaden stated in his interview earlier, uh, we're looking at approximately 22 laps per stint and he's done 42. So in roughly around six minutes, we should see that leading Porsche come into the pit lane. And we'll have to see how long a pit stop's taking for them because the gap is currently less than a minute. But of course, that Alfa Romeo also has to pit too. Another two seconds off of the gap on that lap alone. I'm just worrying because they've got 12 laps old tyres really on the grass there. Uh, so I'm just wondering if the pace will start dropping off uh back down to the three minute forties. Um still very impressive lap times nonetheless. Uh and hopefully he can keep it up so we have a close finish to the race. One thing to note of course as well is the fuel load is going to be burning off so the car will get lighter yeah. throughout the stint. But if you haven't got the tire grip to back for that up, all that's going to do is make it a little bit looser. So you can definitely tell that's what he's trying to do with the car. He's really not driving it on the tyre. He's driving it more on the throttle and the brake. If you look how he flicks it into the corner, just to load all the weight up, so he'll flick the steer in there and slide it through the corner. And uh, doing a very nice job of that, keeping it nice and consistent. And although the gap is coming down, the pit stops do seem to be very much in favour of the Sidehart Classic Racing Team. There does seem to be quite a lot of cars in the final sector at the moment, uh, whether that be for position or people going through um, for back markers. But one thing to note is that the CVR Ward and Lindholm car, which is that red number 10 Mercedes, uh, they're setting really quick personal bests at the moment. They set their own fastest lap last time round at a 39.9, uh, which to the only other Mercedes that's running at the front of the grid is about half a second off their pace, which over a three and a half minute lap ain't too shabby whatsoever. So good to see that they're picking up the pace uh, with a, with one hour and 20 to go. The third place, uh, Bitsarini has just done its own personal best lap of the race, 3 minute 38.9, so they've broken into the 3.38s. Um, very impressive time. They've got pretty old tyres on as well, 12 laps old, cutting the lap, uh, the gap down to second place. However, they are still 41 seconds behind, so uh, we'll have to wait till the pit window to see if anything develops with that, but they're holding strong in a po uh, podium position. So I'm sure they'll be happy with that. Uh, so having a look through the live timing, just seeing if there's any information to bring for you now. 
Uh, one thing to say is that last time round, uh, Grosper and Cyberwolf had a bit of a poor lap. They were about six seconds slower than what they usually achieve, uh, as well as the majority of the people around that area in the grid. So whether something's going on around 10th place does seem to be the case. There is a few of them there. This is once again the number 26 car being chased by that number 33, uh, number 32 Alfa Romeo. So this battle from about two hours ago in the race, is a uh, fire back up again. Someone's lit the fire and uh, they're all back on it. My voice is starting to go, unfortunately, because uh, I hope none of you are noticing, but uh, I need some more water, that's definitely for sure. But a lot of people just trying to set consistent laps. Obviously, they're going to be pitting again soon. The tyres will be a bit worn. A lot of people around the 10, 9, 10, 12 laps into their stint on uh, tyres. It might be worth having a look at the battle between 14th and 15th. Gaps fluctuating about a second. Ah, this is the Nash 788 Corvette that we saw earlier, and I believe that's the Bizzarini that was fighting with the Pendry uh, Corvette as well from early on in this race. So we know that these guys are very familiar with battling, and uh, this is in fact four position. Although it's for 14th, it's still a valid position, of course. And these two still looking very close. One thing to note is that Jaden is on lap, uh, Adam Mike, I should say, is on lap 43. So the 127 car should be heading into the pits at the end of this lap. 21 lap old tyres as well. So that Porsche can do a very long stint, but it does unfortunately have very long pit times because of that. Now it is only a smaller engine, so it doesn't consume as much fuel, however it is taking longer to put that fuel into the tank just to try and equal things out a little bit. So uh, hopefully when we see Jaden and uh, Adamike's car pull into the pit lane, we're about slightly on track. They're just at the back end of sector three now, coming through the final uh, area of these S-band hairpin corners. Final one now on the run up the hill. The number 127 Porsche. Round the last couple corners now. And it will either be a pit stop this time round or next time round. Very sideways. You can tell those tyres are indeed a little bit worn. But Adam Ike doing a very good job and he's had a very solid stint so far. Will we see him head into the pits this time round? It does seem to be the case. He's on the right hand side of the track. We should see him slow down now and head into the pit lane. Not going to miss their pit box, that's for sure. So then, we will have a look now back at Flo and Coyote. They're literally just where we picked up the camera from the uh, Sideheart Classic team. And once again, on a very, very strong pace. Last time round, they were a 39.9. And of course, due to Adamike and Jaden's side heart team uh, having to pull into the pit lane, they were approximately 10 seconds slower that time round. And here comes the Alfa Romeo out of the final corner. Makes a little bit of a mess of that though. Let's go over to Jaden and see how close they are. Don't seem to be anywhere near on fuel and here comes the Alfa Romeo flying down the home straight full chat and it looks like they are going to pass the Porsche 904 for the lead of this race Jaden and Adamike then still in the pit lane the number 22 Flashall and Nat uh, Bizzarini the leading Bizzarini of this race is just coming through the last section now up the hill to fire themselves onto the home straight very sideways you can tell these tires are starting to get a little bit worn there uh, they've done 13 laps on those tires and adamike is out of the pit lane a very good spot there just about getting ahead of the back markers by the looks of things that is the maroon jaguar e-type that Finally we were talking done. about earlier So we haven't seen many E-types during this event, and it might be the only one running. 
Uh, not sure where they are running because we haven't really seen much of that car whatsoever. But it is nice to point out because uh, we haven't really seen much of any E-types at all during this event. And there are, there is supposed to be a couple signed up. This is THR Mac and Lanfear. They've done 11 laps on their tyres. Uh, with their best lap being a 342.5. Uh, with their last lap being a 44.1, and they're currently running 32nd uh, in the race, which is why we haven't seen them on their timing board. Highest place Ferrari, then, is still their GTO Series 2, the number 76 car, which is pink and yellow, with the number 8 spaghetti racing car down in 28th place. But, ooh, very, very sideways there from Adam Ike. Cold tyres, got to get them warmed up. But this means that Adam Ike has got a 30-second gap to Flo and Coyot. However, Flo and Coyot have got to pit. So, can they do a pit stop in 30 seconds, or will it take a little bit longer, and then everybody else has got to try and play the catch-up game on this Porsche 904? Because we know how uh, long this Porsche can go on stints, and that should have been their final stop for the race. So hopefully, if they don't have any damage, then uh, this Porsche could be in a very good spot to win THR four hours of Deutschland ring. That Porsche 904 does look very planted. Over the crest onto the brakes, be careful not to lock up. You can see the amount of tyre marks on the screen in front of you from when the car goes light over the crest you stomp on the brake and all the wheels just want to lock up but very very clean driving so far from adam ike in this second stint of his he's doing a good job of course he's been in the hour uh, been in the car for about an hour and a half now very sideways there maybe just that's an attempt to warm up the tires i'm 100 sure but the margar and pitman now uh there Bizzarini, being driven by Pitman, is now having to deal with the Pendry and Mateus Nolly uh, Chevrolet Corvette. Very good livery on that car. Saw an early development of it on the uh, Oiklinix server, which uh, a lot of Nolly's friends uh, are on. Great little server, that. And... Uh, once again, two cars of similar nature, front engine, rear wheel drive. The Corvette definitely having a little bit bigger tyres, a bit wider, but uh, the lightweightness of the Bizzarini and the smaller tyres do counter that a little bit. Still then very close between these two, about six temps at the moment. Not too much to differ differentiate them in straight line speed, but this is such a great and picturesque course that you see these cars flying through. The cars will flick to the left now, head down the hill into another heavy braking zone through the S-Bends, under the bridge, and uh, over that crest heading into sector three, hard on the brakes now, into the tight hairpin section. One thing to note is that the Adamite car has closed up about two or three seconds onto the leaders who should be pitting in around the next 10 minutes. So this final pit stop should really decide the uh, final order really. Not necessarily the finishing order, but the basis order that we expect to see everybody uh, through raw pace of this race. It's not going to be a case of people have got overlapping pit stops. As long as you pit with uh, about an hour to go, then really that should be about it unless you get damage. So here's a Nolly and James Pendry Corvette all over the rear end now of the Bizzarini. Doing a good job, just keeping the mirrors full. Bit of a slide there. Pitman having to go defensive. Nowhere around the outside, but he can tuck the car into the corner to get the better exit. No real sliding from either of them. Very consistent. Very well done. Now it's just going to be a case of raw power up to the hill. Who can put their car in the best position? Seems like the Nolly and Pendry Corvette has got the slightly better line for a slingshot. Out of the corner. And up the hill they go then. Towards the start finish line. Who's got more power? Who's got more grunt? 
Seems like that Corvette's doing well. Of course, it's got the slipstream too. We see the spaghetti racing Ferrari in the background as they pull out of the slipstream. Side by side across the start finish line, one hour and eight minutes to go. The Pendry and Nolly Corvette is up into 12th, uh, 11th place, I should say, and pulls in front of the Bizzarini into turn one. Down the hill they go over the bridge, feel the compression, and shut the car into the left hand. Long sweeping corner, then you sling it over into the even longer right hander. Only four temps between these two now. Seems like Nolly is behind the wheel of the number 79 car, or number 17 car. One thing to note is Adam Ike is closing the gap down now. Only uh, 27 seconds between the lead, and it shouldn't be long until we see everybody pull into the pits. Nolly then has got a great gap now over Pitman. But a big slide like that isn't going to help him out at all. Manages to just about keep it out the barrier, though. But he's lost a lot of momentum. And this is going to allow Pitman to gain the place back. We'll have to wait. In the first place are indeed pitting then. So this is Flo and Coyle for their final pit stop. Whereabouts is J let's have a look there or actually we've had a bit of a freeze of stream on our end and there we go then so Adam Mike and Jane and HW classic teams hide heart are currently in the lead of this race with one hour six to go what about Nat and Flashor they're just about to fly past two so that is Flo and Coyote down into third place. That was one of the back marker Mercedes. Where is the connectural Mercedes? There it is with Meister Jaeger. They're now up into third place. Still going to make a pit stop though. And what about that Corvette? There it is. The red and white Corvette flying over the start finish line. And they take fourth place. So the Flo and Coyop car still in the pit lane and they just come out now. Next car behind that is the Bizzarini that we saw leading the race so very early on hours ago. So we see dusk is finally starting to set in now. Is this Bizzarini going to have enough speed and momentum to get anywhere near Coyop and Flo? They're about three seconds behind now, but that Alpha's still got a lot of speed it needs to build up. Doesn't seem to be the case. That Alpha's fully up to speed now. And that and Flashor are only 14 seconds off the lead. But of course, they're still yet to pit. So, currently, your race leader is Adamike by a net 56 seconds. Which, really, he can afford a second a lap slower if uh, Flo can put in some very, very quick lap times to uh, try and... Uh, try and eat into the leader's lead but really there isn't particularly too much else going on on track we've got quite a close battle between the margar and nolly or pitman and nolly i should say they're not far apart from each other whatsoever this is the battle that we were looking at before we switched away still then pitman holding on to 11th place Quite a tense battle, this. I believe both drivers do still need to pit. Can Nolly challenge into the first heavy braking zone on the track? Pitman's going defensive, manages to hold a tight line too as they head into the tight and twisty sector two very difficult this one downhill they go very tight but 
Both drivers keeping their cars in check. Oh, apart from Nolly, he clips the inside wall. And that's going to lose him a lot of speed and momentum. Could be a bit of suspension damage as well with the way that he hit it. And that is about a two-second gap now that's been created. Luckily, uh, no real major incident in terms of spinning or time lost. It could have been a whole lot worse. And uh, Nolly hasn't really got anybody behind him to warrant worrying about that either. But uh, very unfortunate there for Nolly to clip the inside wall. And that's given uh, Pitman a lot of breathing room in the number 417 Bizzarini. Anything to note at all on live timing? Not really. Uh, first and second place are both pretty and pretty consistent times with what they were doing before keeping the gap around 20 seconds uh, throughout the lap. Third place, just keeping it tidy. Um, what about in terms of lap time? We'll have to have a look this time around what flow can set yeah. to what uh, Adamike's setting. In the lead, uh, flows in fifth place. His last lap round was a 52, but of course that included his pit time. And uh, flow is just about to cross the start finish line now. Maybe that also includes his outlap. I think yeah, I reckon that would be his pit lap. Though. Maybe his previous one was when he went into the pits. But uh, we've got an hour to go then. So we're three quarters away through this race now. And your race leader is Adamike99. Uh, the most recent THR champion. In the 1991 Formula 1 league. He's got currently a 17 second lead over Nat and Flashaw. But I do believe they still need to pit as they've got 17 laps on their tyres. Next in third place is Valentin Connectural and Meister Jaeger. They've done 13 laps since their last pit stop. So really the next person uh, in line is that Flo and Coyot Alfa Romeo that we're watching now. As they're the only uh, team who's pitted and they're 55 seconds off. So really they need a second of the lap for the next um, well, really, they, they just need a second a lap if they want to catch up with them. Uh, something like that, isn't it? This is 55 second gap and they've got an hour to go. They need a second a lap. Something along those lines anyway. They need to gain time. They can't just be less than a second every lap if they want any chance to try and pounce on these leaders. But uh, as I say, we should see Flash or... Uh, Connectual, uh, Meister Jaeger, Boggle, all those guys pull into the pit lane shortly. So we have we have had a crash of some sort in sector two that did look quite major. But uh, we're currently trying to figure out who that is. We're currently watching your race leader trying to carve through back markers. You do look like they're fighting for position. That's one of the Bizzarinis and the Alpha 33. Seventh place Blitzerini if that had an incident. Is that the 195 car, maybe? Uh, I can't see that. We'll have to have a look. See if there's any visual damage. This was, of course, the car. Yeah, this was this is Flyby Esports. They were at one point in the very front of the pack in that lead battle, but uh, a few mistakes here and there, and not being able to match the sheer pace of the guys at the front dropped them back a little bit. But they haven't pitted yet either for this final stint. They lost 20 seconds in seconds. But yeah, they've lost. As my co commentator just said, if you haven't picked that up, they've lost 20 seconds in sector two alone. So, must have been some sort of mistake for them as we see Nat and Flashor pull into the pit lane. So, let's see everybody else trundle along through. There goes the Meister Jaeger and Valentin Connectual uh, Mercedes up to second. There's another Mercedes, not quite sure what number that was. 
but uh, they must be a lap down as they haven't quite pulled up yet. We've got Van Beek in the uh, Bizzarini. They've pitted two as well as Massé. There goes the Corvette through, so that drops Matt and Flash all down. And there goes the Alfa Romeo 33 setting a personal best, I believe. 337.5. I believe is the quickest lap <clears throat> of the race so far. That was all made up in sector three as well. Not even personal best in sector one or two. Well, they must have been pretty close in sector one or two, but yeah, sector three was very rapid, fastest of anybody all session. And uh, they set a 37.581. Whereas your leader, they ignore everybody in second and third. Really, the battle for the lead is between fourth and first place. So the only cars who have done their final pit stops. This Alpha 33 is on a 30... Oh, their last lap was a 37.5, and the leader was a 40.4. So they've pulled two and a half seconds in one lap. They keep on this pace by the chance. Well, what we're going to do is grab up the English, oh, I already had it up, I just wasn't uh, having a look at it, but uh, what we'll do is have a look at the English stream chat and uh, see if there's anybody who's interested in, oh, we see Hi Hi Racing here, shout out to Riley, hello Panzer, how are you doing mate? Um, and a lot of other people here, we have got 40 people watching the stream now, so hello to each and every one of you. Currently, you're watching the fastest car on track, who's eating away at the lead and really is your net second place. This is the Alfa Romeo 33. Uh, let's get some information up on this Alfa Romeo, uh, which is number 272. Unfortunately, we don't have any information for number 272, so can't tell you too much about it, unfortunately. Um... No, we don't have any driver information on number 272. Oh, is it 727? Yeah. Ah, that would be why then, wouldn't it? Get a brain fade from myself. It's been over three hours now. Oh, there we go, the number 727. Ah, yes, it's this It's this information. Yeah, that's why we didn't go into it last time around. <laughs> I see. Um, thank you, JU Racing. Very much appreciated. It's been a while. Uh, for myself, last time I did, <coughs> last time I did any proper commentary, was for the last THR um, endurance event, which was the 2.4 hours of Le Mans, and I'm joined by my friend Alfie, and this is his first time having a go at commentating, but he's <laughs> a uh, very good sim racer and uh, enjoys a lot of it himself. It's very kind of you. Load of lies, but it's very fun. <laughs> hey. but one thing to really note is well, uh, one thing we did miss during all third of that place. having it yeah we, we missed the third place battle there so <laughs> shit, I'm going to blame that on JU Racing but uh, yeah we missed the uh, swap first um, third place but uh, that did look like it was rather gifted more than there was much battle because by the looks of it that fourth place car is going into the pit lane, which they are now, so that's going to be for their final stop. So maybe they just knew the pace of this. Another quickest lap from the uh, second place, Alfa Romeo. Uh, one, uh, a 337.8. Oh, no. The fastest final sector of the race. And Not the fastest lap. And considering that they had to get past the Corvette at that point too, really goes yeah. to show how quick that Alfa is running in the final sector. We, uh, we saw how much that uh, the Alpha could gain in the final sector just from being rear engine, rear wheel drive, all the weight over that rear axle, how much time it could gain putting the power down over the, uh, uh, the tight corner exits, really just how it wants to hunker down and put the power um, in every way you want it with very, uh, very limited wheel spin at all. So really, since we've been watching this battle uh, since... Really, the pit stop from the Alpha, which was three laps ago, we've seen them take 10 seconds out of the lead, if not a little bit more. So, 
really, if they're taking 10 seconds out in seven minutes, if they can keep this pace up, we should be seeing them come close with about 15 minutes to go. Yeah. Something yep. along those lines. And they have newer tyres than the Porsche in first place as well, so it should be a close one. Not by too much. It's only well, two laps, but hey, it could make a difference. Yeah. Of course, the car in between them is the highest running Mercedes of uh, Valentin Connectual and Meister Jaeger. They're in the number 92 silver car. Um, and they've been running very, very consistent times, but uh, maybe just uh, not necessarily strategy, uh, but they've struggled a little bit. They're doing very, very well and should come out in approximately a net fourth place uh, after all of the pit stops. If they haven't, they haven't pitted already because it's been 15 laps since their last pit stop. But we've got 52 minutes left of this race now. And uh, the main person that we're going to be keeping eyes on is Flo and Koya in the number 727 Alfa Romeo 33. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words, uh, J.U. I'll take that uh, uh, on the chin, I suppose you could say. But... No, it's, it's nice that um, I'm glad to hear because it has been a while uh, for myself doing some commentary. I do a lot of sim racing myself and commentary is one thing that I've been told I should venture a little bit more into, whether that's because I'm very good at talking a lot of words and making it sound exciting or that's just because of my voice, whatever that may be. I've heard a lot of things in that regard, but commentary has not personally been my... Um, most ventured subject, but it's nice to do it every now and again. One thing that we have missed during that uh, a note when I was busy talking about myself in terms of the racing was the switch for seventh place, and that is the number 22 uh, Bizzarini. And we've now got a three way battle for seventh place. One thing that I've missed, um, of course, talking about other things, but we've got the Shelby. Um, the Corvette, so two American muscle cars against this Italian Bizzarini, all front engine rear wheel drive. And these three are very, very close with 50 minutes left to go. Last time round then, Adamike was able to set a 339.42. It was a 338.0. So another second and a half taken out of the lead from the net second place. I'm not sure it's going to be possible for Meister Jaeger and Valentin to carry on uh, with the tyres and fuel load that they've got, but we'll have to wait and see as we see Ward and Lindholm in their Mercedes Benz, the number 10 red uh, Mercedes, pull into the pits for their final stop. And this is the battle for seventh place. The Bizzarini of Nat and Flashor have come out of the pits quite recently. They've only done one lap on their tyres. Um, and it seems like all the cars behind them have done a lot more than that. So the Shelby that we're seeing all over the rear end has done 15 laps. 11, 11 laps on those tyres and fuel. And the Corvette behind has done 15 laps. So we're seeing even though the tyres are a lot older on that Shelby. It's really still able to stick with this Bizzarini in this sector of the track. 49 minutes to go then. The gap really to the lead is 49 seconds uh, from third place to first. The second place car still yet to pit, as already stated. But this is probably the closest battle on track which is the battle for 6th place now, as the Warden Lindholm car drops down to 11th uh, due to their pit stop, and they come out now uh, with no real threat from Nash behind. Everybody seems to just be setting consistent sector times. The times are dropping off a little bit throughout the field, but, well, apart from the leader and the guy in 3rd place, a couple personal bests here and there. Uh, we've got uh, Good Smile and Myers. They're running in 15th. They started third on the grid, so I'm going to presume it's Good Smile in the car now, just trying to bring that vehicle back up through the field. They're currently a lap down in the number 740 uh, taxi uh, liveried Bizzarini. 
but everybody really doing a good job keep mostly keeping it out of the barrier but you can see how much of a gap that the Bizzarini can pull in this second sector uh, whether that's just due to the nature of the course or the tyres are really starting to let these two down as they are on a lot older rubber than the guy in front but we'll have to wait and see 47 seconds now the gap from first to third One thing to say is we do have an a, uh, interview coming up from Mario Spaghetti. He is the driver of the, uh, the number 8 Ferrari 250 that we haven't really seen that much of in this race, but we do see him every now and again, so we're going to drag him into a chat and uh, have a little chat with him for a bit. Good evening, Mario. How's it all going? It seems like we're having a little bit of technical issues here with Mario. We'll leave him in the chat for a little bit as we see the number three really lock up, struggling on those tyres when we uh, get uh, Mario on the call. Uh, we shall let you know, but we're currently not receiving much activity from him, so we'll drop him back into the interview waiting chat. Uh, still the battle's raging on between these two American muscle cars with 45 to go. The number 3 and the number 17 cars. This is, uh, let's let's have a look who's in the number 3 car. I know it's Nolly and Pendry in the uh, Corvette behind. But the number 3 is a 289 Hardtop Cobra. And uh, this is Fabian Fabek and Lucas Muller for the Triple I Racing uh, entry for the THR community. They're doing a good job to pull a bit of a gap out now on Nolly and Pendry in the Corvette behind. Gap still 47 seconds to the lead. What were the lap times last time around? <clears throat> Another 3.37 from uh, the Alfa Romeo and a 3.39 from uh, Adamite. So pretty consistent on what they're doing 37 as most laps from the alpha and 39s from the porsche so that's two seconds out of them on the last lap it really seems to be regarding sector times you can see that they're half a second quicker in the first sector just on this lap alone um that alpha is a very very quick car it just doesn't have the same um what would you say, like pit strategy elements as the yeah, Porsche? Yeah. Porsche is just able to run for so much longer than any other car on the track. It does uh, get held back by its longer pit stop time, but they've done such a good job managing it and pushing to, to make enough time up to, to save for the pit stop. So I think pretty unbeatable by any of the other teams at this point, unless uh, the Alfa Romeo is able to to keep at this pace for the remainder of the race well the gap now has dropped down to 49 so maybe there was a mistake from the alpha or the porsche is really starting to pick up the pace yeah um, we'll have to have a look at sector times but the gap's now down to 50 so maybe a bit of a mistake from the alpha just having to push so hard this time round. but we're now looking on board with uh, Matthias nolly who's a regular at crs uh, but they're entered under the THR uh, community, I believe. They are indeed. Um, but Nolly, a very, very quick driver, having raced against him myself. Very strategic as well. Knows where to put his car and where not to. And quite smart and very willing to be patient. So uh, we'll see what Nolly can achieve. He's all over the rear end of the Shelby. He's a little bit wide, but can cut the car in. This onboard view, first time we're going on board throughout the stream probably should have done it a little bit more throughout but uh nolly really showing you how to use all uh, the extent of the track and really just how quick this track is and how there's no margin for error how quick it is over the crest car goes light try not to lock the wheels up over the bridge we should have gone on board a little bit more yeah. often i think <laughs> yeah yeah but no it's really so hectic there was so much going on I don't think we would have seen what we needed to see with the amount of cars that were together yeah 
for a great one-on-one -on -one battle like this and you can see as well that they're coming on to a back marker up ahead actually that might be sixth position piper um because they're only two minutes seven behind the lead as we see valentin and meister jaeger finally head into the pits but what was the lap times last time round for first and second place? Uh, 41 from uh, the Alpha. So they obviously had a mistake in Sector 2. They were two seconds off there. Sector 1 and Sector 3 were pretty consistent with what they were doing before. Uh, Porsche, once again, 3.39. Same every lap. Very consistent. Just bringing it home, I think, at this point. Well, one thing to note is that these cars do seem to be quite similar in a straight line. Uh, they're 247Ks from the Porsche and 246 from the Alpha. Um, but it seems like a mistake from Nolly has dropped them quite far back. A bit of a lock-up at the previous hairpin. Good job I've got the playback up on the previous stream, otherwise <laughs> I would have missed that. But uh, yeah, a bit of a lock-up. Lost him a lot of speed and momentum. And uh, we'll have to see where the Valentin Connectual... Uh, Mercedes uh, with Meister Jaeger, they come back out. So they've got a lot of cars flying through there. So this all is for position. And there goes the Nolly Corvette around the outside, as well as we've got one of the Bizzarinis in the background picking up the pace out of the pit lane. Uh, so Margar and Pitman also in the pit lane for their final stop with 40 minutes to go. Uh, but the main talking point is the leader's uh, or the leader, Adamike99, has got a 49 second gap over second place, which is Flo. And uh, Flo's got a lot of work to do if he wants to close this gap up. He closed it up about 15 seconds in the last 20 minutes, but a mistake really dropped him further back on the previous lap. And uh, it's now all really against him. He's got to try and build up that momentum um, to uh, gain the gap back. Uh, JU Racing, you would have to get in contact with the administrators of THR um, and uh, to get an idea of who's actually streaming this league. Is Really, I'm just logged into a virtual machine, so this is just what's given in front of me, and I can click about and do stuff, but this isn't on my own personal end, so I can't actually tell you, unfortunately. But it does look very smart, I agree, because you get the yellow flag, all that good information at the top, as well as the game time. You can see that we're slightly moving into dust now, being 4.19 in the afternoon. 40 minutes to go. And the gap for the lead is still 49 seconds. And do you know what the sector times were last time around? Same as always. 20, uh, 23 uh, second uh, sector twos uh, for both of them. They're, they're pretty much matching each other this lap. As I say, it's probably quite tricky to build the momentum back up after a big mistake like that because you get so in the zone yeah. and it was 37, 37, 38, 37 for so long for like the last six laps that Flo's been out with setting so quick pace, probably driving at 110% because so he was only two seconds off of a quality time on no fuel. So you've kind of got to imagine that um, really it's getting to a point where you can only drive that fast for so long before you make a mistake. And now it's just trying to get back into the groove and uh, find your rhythm again. One thing to note is we've got quite a good battle for fifth place. This is the number 26, 289 hardtop, followed by the number three. And then the Nolly and Pendry Corvette in the background seems to have pulled the gap a little bit back in. Looking at them too, they all have to pit very soon. Um, it's been, how many laps has it been since? Since what, sorry? Uh, fifth, sixth and seventh place. Um, what are we looking at? Fifth, 17 oh. laps for fifth place, uh, 14 for sixth and 18 for seventh. So all very old tyres. Surprised they're so in shape, those big powerful cars with their mild tyres, but. Well, you can see them really having to load the tyres up around really the corners rough. too. Yeah, yeah. And now the number three car is going to cut into the corner on exit and try and swing it out. Big slide. That's warm tyres for you. And this should be the number three car going past. Whether the 26 is going to pull into the pit lane does seem to be staying rather to the right-hand side. Because we've now got a change 
as Nolly in the Corvette pulls into the pit lane, and these two are side by side, the number three and the number 26. I was under the impression that the 26 was going to pit, but that's not the case. So Nolly's pitting with 38 minutes on the clock to go. And the number 26 is all over the rear end of the three. The three got past in a straight line after the 26 made the mistake. Corner exit, lighting up the rear tyres, spinning it out and losing a bit of momentum. But we've now got a couple cars in the pit lane. The 195 Bizzarini uh, is now down to ninth, and that brings Ward and Lindlaw, Lindholm up to eighth. And the number 26 car is still trying to challenge around the outside of the number three. No space to go there, though, and slots back in behind. Tries to look for the inside, can't quite find the space. A little bit of a lock-up from the three, but manages to get it stopped all okay. 37 minutes to go now. Nose to tail between the two Shelby 289s. And the gap still from first to second is 49 seconds. Last lap round, it was a 38.835 from the race leader. So we can tell that he's picked the pace up a little bit. And from Flo, it was a 37.8. So he's still going quick, but uh, not quick enough if he wants to catch up to the race leader at this point. One thing to also note is that Matt and Flashaw, their Bizzarini is the highest running Bizzarini in the race. And uh, they've managed to set a personal best first sector too. created between the number three car and the next running Cobra. I didn't see what happened. Seems like the number 26 was just being quite cautious and uh, dropped back a little bit. Maybe ran a bit wide on one of the right-handers and that offset their line a bit. And that's allowed the number three to really gain a bit of an advantage. So we'll have a look back at um, this Shelby Cobra, which... Actually seems to have allowed, we must have missed that on yeah. the stream, because the uh, Valentin Knitsch or Meister Jaeger Mercedes has uh, got through, so apologies for missing that. There's just a little bit going on uh, outside of the commentary at the moment. But there is the uh, 134 Cobra, uh, which is a backmarker car that we've seen get out of oh, the yeah. way, or the 131 Cobra, which we've seen get out of the way a couple times now from onboards, just the pack working their way through the back markers. But one to definitely watch is going to be this Meister Jaeger Valentin Mercedes 300 SL. As uh, looking at their pace, it is looking a little bit quicker than the cars around them. How do you feel about some onboard footage of this? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Who will go on board with the sixth place car, the number 26 Shelby? Heading up the hill, we should get a great sense of speed heading to the home straight. See the car's really got to dive into the corners, dab a brake, lift off the throttle just to help it turn in. Hugging the apex nicely and slingshot yourself up the hill. The track fits itself over to the long left hander. And then you really just full throttle up the hill through the gearbox. All the way. Oh, as he heads into the pit lane, missing the uh, pit entry white line. Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. So this should be the final pit stop for the sixth place car, which is an 18 laps on the last set of tyres. We'll head over to Valentin Knitsch on the Meister Jaeger car now. As they head into the first sector complete look at that look how much speed they're carrying through hugging the exit that'll be great to see this long right on camber hand corner look at that it's never ending you're constantly looking at the top right of your screen when's it going to end it's still going the amount of load that the tires must be under for this absolutely insane slingshot yourself up the hill under the bridge and before you know it you're hard on the brakes for this long tight right hander to shoot yourself into the forest for sector two. So yeah, and the gap has closed up a little bit from first to second place down to 46 seconds now, but there is only half an hour remaining of the race. So unless there are some major mistakes made by Adam Ike, it's looking very much in the Porsche's favor. Yeah, both did uh, 339 ones the last lap. 
pretty much dead on. The uh, number four, uh, the fourth place Cobra will have to pit soon as well, I believe. So that will allow this uh, Meister Jaeger uh, Mercedes to, to get into fourth place. As we can see, they must be struggling a little bit because we're actually starting to catch up with them now. Yeah. Only three seconds off is the baby blue and white stripe number three car, uh, Shelby Cobra. Which we can just see making a big lock up there at the bottom of the hill in front of us. Great to finally go on board for a full lap now that we've got a little bit of a clean air with most of the pack separated. Finally start to appreciate this track. Flying through the valley here, trees either side, no room for error whatsoever. Under the bridge, over the crest, into the braking zone. That car goes light, first crest, second crest, slam on the brakes, down the gearbox, hug it into the right hand side, the drift out for the left hander, flick it in there, touch the apex, minding the fence post though. And now you've got a tricky corner because the racing line wants to sling you to the inside of this hairpin, no room to go outside, you've got a big wall of rocks on your left hand side so it can't go out too wide there and then you've got to bring the car over to the right hand side of the track for this next corner cut it in nicely on exit to get a straight line out so you're not going to get too much wheel spin and then once again you're flying towards the next tight corner once again it's one to the right and it'll flick you to the left up the hill we go and before you know it you've got another one thrown right in front of you and then the track will flick you over to the right hand side again after this very intense sector three here and uh, really helps differentiate uh, each individual car because you've got sector one which is all high speed designed for the american muscle the corvettes the shelby's all that good stuff and then you've got the alphas and the porsches that love that last sector and everything in sector two kind of balances itself out so you can put all this effort in sector three if you're in a porsche or an alpha to try and build a gap and then the american muscle just laughs at you presses the throttle and drives past you towards turn one any information on laps last time round? it did look to be a little bit slower from adamike um adamike yes two seconds slower i don't know where in the lap that came from as the second time to update but uh, it was a 340 which is about two seconds off the pace of uh the alfa romeo uh, doing a 338.6. Still very impressive lap time for 10 years old, 10 lap old tyres. One thing definitely to know, as you said earlier, is the fourth place car is going to have to pit at some point. Because they've done 17 laps on their tyres and they are on a Shelby and every other Shelby seems to pit at the end of lap 18. Mm -hmm. So it will either be this lap or next lap that we'll see this uh, Valentin and Meister Jaeger Mercedes get up to fourth place. Carrying so much speed into yeah. the corners, yeah. Properly squatting the nose down, trying to get it rotated into the corner. You see the Shelby in front does seem to be having not necessarily a little bit of issues, but complications trying to find a way past the yellow back marker. This section's so tight. Reminds you of the Nürburgring when you yeah. get down the hill, doesn't it? Yeah. But with this track, you've got no room for error whatsoever. Literally a picket fence stopping you from hitting the trees. Well, these picket fences are very solid in this game, yeah. but I'm sure they wouldn't be that solid in real life. <laughs> down the hill we go then. Got the back marker in front. And then in front of that, we've got the blue and white fourth place car so this is the battle for position if you minus the yellow car but they seem to be having a lot of fun with this battle and are not particularly willing to let the mercedes advance oh. go well held to be fair very well held just a little bit too hot on corner entry locked up the um. rears number 38 finally backs out to uh let the mercedes go through but they had to lose a little bit of momentum squaring up the corner and uh, that's not helped them out to try and close the gap to fourth place. Hard on the brakes, down the gears once again. We've been really enjoying the softball camera from yeah. the Mercedes. Surprisingly, the Mercedes is about four kilometres an hour quicker than the Cobra. Um, so when we get to the straight, you should gain on them if 
the Cobra doesn't pit, I have a suspicion he will probably pit. It's the end of the 18th lap on these tyres, and uh, following the trends of the other Cobras, I think that will be it. We'll have to wait and see, but not too long now, as they're just finishing up on the final sector. See them using all of the gutters just to try and gain those last few temps. If you can clip a corner a couple centimetres tighter, then you'll uh, just find that tiny little bit of time that you might need. But the gap's remaining yeah. rather he's even. He's on a good pace. He's, he's only about half a second a lap slower than the Mercedes behind him. Um, it's just a question of how long he can keep that up. Speaking of uh, trying to put in good lap times and keeping it up, um, mm -hmm. no pun intended, um, it seems like Flo and Coyot are uh, struggling to really reel that gap in now, as we were hoping to see. It's really not a case of them going much slower. It's more a case of Adam Ike finding a little bit more pace, holding the gap around the high 40, uh, the high 39 uh, lap time mark, keeping the gap around 47, 46 seconds. One thing that we have got is this Shelby seems a little bit keen on trying to unlap itself, um, but uh, that's not going to happen. It's going to be a monumental accident. <laughs> yeah, it did look a little bit sketchy, didn't yeah. it? But what we have got now is it's it, it has to be really confirmed that the fourth place car is going to pit at the end of this lap. Um, we haven't really got that many other cars too close on track. It's really this Mercedes is all we can see. If there are any other battles at all, it would be great to see. It must have been a bit of a lockup, some smoke on the screen from this Shelby in front. Let's have a look there. Do we have a rear facing camera? Maybe we do. Uh, but really, it's not to the Mercedes isn't that close that we're going to see much of it. But uh, it's really, you can see how much speed they're carrying tumbling down the hill. And it does look like the Merc is closing a bit. You can see the lights flashing. Uh, whether that just be from the camera angles and the windscreen being a little bit funky with it. But the Merc is definitely closing on this downhill section. Most likely due to it having a lot fresher tyres than the Shelby that we're on board with now. 25 minutes to go then of this race. We've been live for three and a half hours. And uh, currently your leader is Adam Ike with tie, uh, Team Sideheart, their classic racing division, leading Team Kamikaze by 46 seconds uh, with Flo and Koya. This is then the battle for fourth place. And the Mercedes is all over the rear end of the Shelby 289. Lights ablaze. It's half past four in the afternoon game time. Mercedes looking for the inside. Lights absolutely ablaze, filling up the mirrors of that Shelby. Down into sector three then. Loads of tight hairpins here. A little bit wide from both drivers, but managed to tidy it up on exit. Big slide from the number three, though. Surely they have to pit at the end of this lap. If not, it will be one more maximum. I can't see how they're going to get much more time, um, whether that be on fuel load or tyre wear, really out of this car, as it is looking a little bit difficult to drive at this point. I can only think that... Uh... They do a quick splash of fuel, change tyres, and just flat out till the end. That's all they that's... really can do, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. The, their tyres are too far gone to, to stay out any longer. It's not worth it. I don't think they're risking more than it's worth. They can quite easily get top six, I reckon, if they have a good pit stop and no incidents. Uh, they'll be coming out in front of the Corvette which is doing pretty good lap times of 3 minute 41s. So, you know, it could be close. And it's into the pits for the Cobra. Not surprising. 
It was only a matter of time, wasn't it? And 18 laps is the maximum that we've seen from a Cobra. So uh, it was almost a given that they were going to pit at the end of this lap. And now we watch them tumble down the timing boards as we see the Ward and Lindblom uh, number 10 Mercedes go through. They're in hot pursuit of the red and white Corvette that we saw a lot of at the start of the race. But uh, about four second, three second gap between those two. And uh, really, that's probably the closest battle that we've got access to on track with 22 minutes to go of this race. We did have a position change further back. Whether that was due to a mistake or something else, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, it might have been a pit stop, actually, that was a little bit late updating. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where this number three car comes back out as they're just now leaving the pit lane. And where is the Pendry and Nolly Corvette? They're just coming to the end of sector three now. So they won't be anywhere near close enough to challenge. And uh, this might be not necessarily the finishing order, but uh, it's looking like this is really going to be a... Uh... Well... Well, we'll have to Common wait and see. Any, anything, anything can still happen, can yeah. it? I don't want to say too much. But one thing to say is that the Warden Lindholm uh, Mercedes uh, Benz in hot pursuit of the Rogor Massive Corvette has set an own personal best for Sector. So that is the battle for fifth place. There's currently about 2.7, two and a half seconds between them now. This is the closest battle on track, the battle for 18th place. I believe between two Shelby's, the 131 goes around the outside of the number 26. An update on uh, first and second. Uh, the Alfa Romeo is now losing time. Uh, take that back. They've just done a 347 their last lap. Are they pitting? They are pitting, they are yeah. Pitting. They did a quick in lap. <clears throat> Whether that was a mistake in fuel load or yeah. maybe their tires ran out, I'm not 100 percent sure. But they were they were 11 lap old tires, I believe. Uh, that was a very quick in lap. They had a poor lap the lap before, uh, about three seconds a lap slower than what the Porsche was doing. Um, I'll be interested to see how long their stop takes. Well, it seems like they're out of pits now. They're already out. So it's fuel them, wasn't it? They're just heading into the first corner, so I'm going to guess it was mostly f a fuel issue. But they've uh, chosen to whack a new set of tyres on, because why wouldn't you? If you need to put that much fuel in and you can get a free set of tyres, you might as well. Um, but here we see the battle for fifth place starting to heat up. That's a good camera angle really gives you an idea of how hard the driver is having to work to try and keep the car in check. So they are closing up on the back of the Corvette, but the Corvette's got a bit more horsepower, so we should see them pull away down the home straight here. The gap is currently half a second. Bit of a tidier exit from the back of the Merc, but we'll uh, have to see how big that gap gets up. It's already Six tenths of a second, that's seven tenths of a second as the Corvette just pulls away down the home straight. See if we can get a rear facing camera on the back of this Corvette. Yes, we can. New personal best then from the Ward and Lindholm Mercedes. They're really on a bit of a late hand, a late charge here. Just trying to maybe scrape a top five. If they can go all out, they've got a big. Well, about a 45 second gap to the car behind them so even if they do make a mistake they should be okay until the end of the race so really maybe it's just a case for them to try and go all out and uh, bring the car home in fifth place looking at the rear end of the Corvette then. You can see the lights flashing. Once again, another Mercedes with its lights absolutely ablaze. Down the hill they go. This is where the Merc should be stronger. 18 minutes, 30 seconds to go. Can the Mercedes find a way past the Corvette? 
to absolutely mental the downhill section here. We shall go on board with Ward and Limblom. Oh, they're oh. all over. You can see how hard they're pushing. A little bit of contact with the wall there. Whether they have suspension damage or not, we are yet to find out. But, managed to keep it all together for the time being. See the undulations in the rows. They're a little bit wide there. And that's going to allow the Corvette to get a better exit. But they are catching up to a back marker. That looks like a light blue Mercedes, if I'm not mistaken. Car number, we don't know yet. But, the Mercedes has gained a little bit of time back already. We know it's very strong in this Sector 2. But they're both quite equal in Sector 3 due to the nature of the car. How quick is the light blue Merc going to get out of the way? He's looking for the outside. No room to get past there. White and red Corvettes now going defensive. And the blue car is not getting out of the way. The number 36 Corvette going very defensive on the inside. Number 10, nothing he can do there. Still going defensive. Number 10 tries the outside. No room there. Cuts it into the corner. Tries to slingshot it out. Not enough power to get alongside though. That Corvette's got a lot of grunt, especially on the uphill. But they're all still stuck behind this light blue Mercedes. So the light blue Merc finally pulls off to one side. The number 10 looks for the inside and goes for it. Very, very reactive, precise moves there. Great, great job. However, is that Merc going to have enough grunt? to keep ahead on the uphill section. Let's go on board with the number 36 and try and find out. Up the hill they go. A little bit of correction from the Corvette and I lost a little bit of time there. But how much extra power have they got? The Corvette is on uh, nine lap old tires and the Merc is on eight. So there's not too much of a difference entire wear with them but this is where the Corvette comes into its own in straight line speed even though they're quite a way back holding it in the slipstream there's another temp gained in comes the gap another temp down can they carry the extra speed all the way up the hill he's looking quite far back though but we've seen how much speed the Corvette can carry around these corners here it comes it's really starting to reel it in now 15 minutes to go of this four hour race Bouncing over all of the curbs. Corvette's a little bit wide. Keeps it on the track though, just about. But we saw how much the Merc gained here last time round, so it might just be a case of the Mercedes just pulling away through sector two. One thing to also look at, the battle for seventh place is looking rather tight, so we'll have a look at that shortly. Both drivers setting 342s last time round with a 42-4 from 7th and a 42-2 from 8th. Coyote's on a very fast lap. Personal best uh, in Sector 1 and a full race best in Sector 2. And Purple will see how is Sector 3 is very, very quick in Sector 3 usually. Uh, so this will probably be a fastest lap of the race. As long as I haven't cursed him by saying that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Coyotes had a lot of good pace, especially with Flo as well. They've been um, really on a charge. It's just been hard for them to string it all together. And uh, the Porsche did seem to have a little bit of better strategy, just able to go longer uh, with their fuel, with their tyres, about 20 minutes longer than anybody else. And uh, got their driver swap done early on. Adam Ike's had a great couple stints through the pit stops and really since about two and a half hours to go, from the race and uh, kept it all on track and did a very, very good job to uh, hold on to the lead. And now they've got 1 minute 22, a massive gap to second place. What's it going to be then from Flo and Coil? One thing to note is that battle for 8th and 9th has swapped places. But we're going to have a look at Coyot's fastest lap of the race here now, potentially. Wow, another purple sector, three minutes, 35s. Two seconds quicker than any lap we've had before this whole race. 
That's absolutely incredible. So he wow. set a 335.891. And I believe wow. that would have been good enough. I shall let you know shortly. A 335.891 would have been good enough for third, for fourth place in well, technically third place because his own time was a thirty-five point six. So technically, that would have put him third place in qualifying in race trim. That's an insanely fast lap. Last time round, it was a forty point eight from Adam Ike, but he doesn't really need to go over the top of his time, so he's got over a minute um, to second place with twelve minutes to go on the clock um, one thing to note is uh, everyone's really quite uh, stretched out at this point there's a lot of cars in the sector three so I think when we get to the next hairpin we'll uh, put the F7 cam on and watch everybody go through see if we can pick up some battles whether that be with back markers or whatnot but uh, if we hold the camera there we can see one of the mercs coming through That seems to be the number 25 Porsche involved in an incident early on as well. The number 32 Alfa Romeo. Um, try and pick them up wherever they are. Number 32. Seems to have dropped off the timing board unless I am completely blind. Number 32. Number 32. Doesn't seem to be there, but we do have access to the 25. And there's quite a lot going on here. So whether this is for position or not, I'm not sure, because we've got the number three Shelby. Uh, that is the car currently in eighth place, going past all of them. But uh, they've got the number four, three, eight. Uh, I can't even remember what it's called now. That that thing. In, in Bitserini. Yeah, the Bitserini. They've got that in front of them. I'm getting the, <laughs> I'm getting the brain fade now. It's been too long. Uh, but there's 11 minutes left of this race to go, and I do believe that the... Um, the, this Porsche, as so we've got Jaden and Adam Ike now, uh, 61 laps into this race. Yeah. They're now coming onto the back of the Porsche. So let's watch them carve through the field, go on board with them for a lap. It's 4.49 race time, and uh, the race should be finished at 5 o'clock event time. What a race this has been! A great spectacle for sim racing. And uh, to everybody who is a classic race lover, what a wow. great move from Adam Mike. What a great move that was. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, we, we see why they're winning the race now, don't we? Yeah, okay. But uh, one thing to note is I do believe that the battle uh, the, between the number 25 is actually... It, it, it might be for position on the leaderboard, but there's a lapse difference between them. So I don't know if it is actually for position or not. Um, but yeah, this is Sideheart Classic Team. Uh, ran by Jaden HW and Adam Ike 99. Really not necessarily been in a class of their own, but always been in the right place at the right time. Coyote's in the pits again. Coyote is in the pits again. I guess he's trying to do a Formula One-esque. I, fastest lap to prove a point. I, I oh, mean, he's back out again. He's back out. I'm not. Did he have he a bad slowed sector? and drove through the pits. It came off his pit. It pit in on the uh, timing screen. Right. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, we've got ten minutes to one. Nine minutes to go now. Didn't change tires. But... Hmm. Yeah, because he's still got for something. I don't know. But... Maybe a speeding in the pit lane yeah. or something like that. Not not 100%, but the number 727 car has a really... If you wanted a hot lap, yeah. the 727 car has been the one to watch. Like a spectacle of driving, seriously, seriously quick. Fastest car on track at times, but unfortunately just hasn't really been able to put it all together. The odd few mistakes here and there. Ran in the top five... Um, for the majority of the first hour and then made a mistake and it's really been um chasing trying to just gain the time back since then and kind of always been on the back foot and it's really unfortunately 
put a bit more pressure on the Flo and Coyot car. And they've made the odd little bit of mistake here, but they've shown absolutely moments of brilliance. And to bring the car home uh, at currently at the moment in second place after a four hour event with the class of driving that's been shown here tonight is definitely something special. So a very, very good job to them. One that's flown a little bit under the radar is Nat and Flashor in their Bizzarini. We haven't seen too much of them, but they've just always been, once again, another team in the right place at the right time. And, um, yeah, managed to get the car onto the podium. Be, be careful. Don't go, don't, don't go crashing into the walls. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they've done a very, very good job throughout this race. As I say, they, they've kind of just kept themselves to themselves, I believe. We haven't seen too much of them on the stream. Always just seem to have made the most of other people's mistakes, and um, it's ended them up in third place at the moment with seven minutes to go, so a very good job from them. Brilliant livery as well. It's a nice livery as well, isn't it? It's very suiting to uh, like old 60s race cars, where it's very all about... Classy. Yeah, yeah. That is very good, that. So then, it's four different cars in the top four. Unfortunately, it's not that E-Type behind, as us being British, of course, we would have loved that. <laughs> but uh, the E-Type hasn't really been anywhere to, to, to be seen throughout this entire race. Um, but the car that has been seen a multitude of times is the Meister Jaeger and Vantin Knitschel Mercedes 300 SL. Um, really battling, once again, in that top five battle throughout most of the opening hour and then just kept themselves to themselves had a very good race made some great moves at some points throughout the race and just ended themselves up in fourth but the race isn't over yet for them it's not far behind they've got the second mercedes shooting massive amount of flames out the side the number 10 uh bloody Wartburg racing car um once again we didn't see much of them in the first hour or so no. but ever since they've just always very been tidy. there yeah. Right place, right time, doing the right things. No bad words to say about them. Brilliant colour on their car as well. Love a bit of red. Of course you do. <laughs> yeah, I know um, you do. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, um, props to them. Credit where credit's due. Uh, brilliant drive. Uh, they're fifth at the moment. Yeah, so they deserve their top five for sure. Um, One thing that we had uh, that we haven't noted until now, uh, it turns out the number 32 car is registered as the number 14 um, on the live timing. That's why we couldn't find it. Uh, but they've just overtaken the number three blue and white Cobra for eighth place. So that's one, um, one position that's been changed very late on. And it seems like a lot of people are coming through the final sector now yeah. so really who is at the front of that Limblom is quite towards the front of that so maybe if we wait for the next camera to go through then we can finally watch the complete class of the THR four hours every car that's remaining running which does seem to be the majority of the group really we've got definitely over 30 cars still running from over 36 entered and with four minutes to go we should be able to see a great amount of the class of the field come through any final thoughts at all no it's been race? good i've enjoyed it uh yeah it's been a great race great track i will drive it when i i'm not when i get home it's too late <laughs> yeah i might book the day off work tomorrow <laughs> and uh, do some laps but um no, it's truly inspiring racing. Um, wonderful cars, wonderful team, running everything. It's gone very smoothly, and uh, I'm very appreciative that I've been invited to be a part of it. Good to hear. Good to hear. How about you? It's It's been straining on my voice, I'll yeah. say that. <laughs> but no, it's, um, some of the battles that we've seen tonight and the strategy that's all gone into it, it's really been something special that you wouldn't quite see on say a 20 minute sprint race or something like that um it's really been a, a case of well stuff like this that we're seeing now yeah the the number 32 alpha going around the outside of the number three shelby 
Um, there was a brief swap of positions, and now it's been swapped back. So three minutes, 20 to go. Uh, there have been a total completed of 63 laps, which around a track that's this long is rather impressive. Although it is quite a long track, it's a very fast track, so those miles are covered rather, rather quickly. So this is probably the closest battle on track that we're seeing now. There is... Uh, the, the cars are quite close between 4th and 5th, that's the two, two Mercedes, uh, the Gull Wings. They're approximately 3 seconds apart, so they're fighting over the highest winning, or the highest finishing Mercedes, but this is a very close battle, and you know with 2 minutes 40 to go, things might get a little bit desperate, so we'll keep an eye on this, but of course when the timer goes to zero, all eyes will be on the race leader who I believe is actually the car in front of this battle now. It is indeed. Uh, that is the Adam Ike and Jaden HW Porsche 904 slash 6, of course. Um, thank you, as I say, to everybody in the chat now. Um, on the YouTube live streams, there's been... Uh, THR is predominantly a German community, so there has been a split German and English stream for this. Whether the... German stream has had the viewership that we've had over here on the English stream because we've been holding around 40 viewers for the majority of this event, which is quite a astounding, uh, uh, quite a achievement, I should say, for something that's being held on a Sunday night when everyone just wants to go to bed and sleep and <laughs> do nothing. But no, it's great to see that there's been quite a lot of support for this event. Um, because a lot of planning went into it by THR, and there's a lot of good people here who really know how to run a show. So it's um, it's been a great pleasure to commentate on this myself. The action's still not over. We've still got the number three car hunting down the number 32 Alpha, but we know the Alpha's very strong in this final sector, and it seems like Adamite just might be trying to bring the Porsche home because these Alphas and the Shelbys are closing up on him a little bit here. Um, he's, he's oh. oh, okay. We've had a spin from the lead Porsche, managed to get the car all up and running again, though. Number 127. So they have done 19 laps on yeah. these tires, but they've got a two minute gap to the cars behind. Um, that's Adamite okay. seems to be having a lot of issues with his Porsche. He's got 27 seconds left of the race, and that's one of the backmarker Mercedes coming up behind. Is he just wasting time so that it finishes and he doesn't have to do another lap? I was about to suggest yeah. that, but he is going full chat up the hill by the sounds of it. So if he times it well, this will be the, the end of the THR four hour, but it's going to be very tight, I think across Ooh. the timing line but there we, go. there we go that is your race winner adamite 99 jadem hw in the team sideheart classic racing porsche 904 slash six a great drive from them to uh, bring the car home in first place and uh well done so second place as we've seen it's going to be the flow and coil uh <coughs> Is it, this is the battle for second. Wow. This is the battle for second. Oh, wow. I must have missed this. So, the number 22 Bazzarini car, uh, ba yeah, whatever it's Bitsarini. called, the Bitsarini is up into second place with no time left on the clock. And uh, there doesn't seem to be anything. Not that... newer tyres on the other. No. Not a lot newer. 10 lap newer tyres. Yeah, there's 15 lap old tyres on the back of. I like it. Oh. This is a this is the end of a four hour endurance race, and we've got the second place battle within a second of each other. What an amazing spectacle to behold! But it seems like really that uh, Betsarini, whatever it's called, <laughs> uh, my brain is completely fried. But uh, the Alpha doesn't seem to be able to do anything about it, and what a shame that is for Kamikaze. But the number twenty two Betsarini has uh, managed to pull off something very special here. That is uh, Nat and Flashaw for Flashback Racing. Uh, that's Nat Stevenson and Flashaw 
Uh, they're representing for THR, so CRS have taken the overall community win, but THR have uh, managed to pull off something very special. Let's watch them go over the start-finish line. What a uh, great finish from them. So Coyle had a, had a problem in Sector 2 uh, and Sector 1. Very slow in both, five seconds off in both sectors. Seems like there might have been some sort of tyre issue yeah, or maybe they had to save a lot of fuel. Yeah. Maybe they fueled it a little bit short. But there we go then. Drama on the final lap of the four hours of Deutschland ring. It's going to be Coyle and Flo bring the car home in third. That's got to be disappointing for them. But there we go then. This is the battle for fourth place. Uh, Ward and Lindholm weren't able to catch up to uh meister jaeger and connectual so they bring their cars home in fourth and fifth respectively then next is going to be one of the shelby's there's the e-type bringing it home that we didn't see much of during the race at all i believe the only jaguar um uh, uh, to race at this event there is the corvette finishing bringing the car home in sixth place and uh quite a way behind we have the next bit Serini in seventh place, which is the 195 car that we saw a lot of at the start of the race. But uh, behind them, the Alfa Romeo, and uh, we're going to go to this battle. This is the number 32 and the number three Shelby. They're still extremely close, less than a second between them with, well, they're just coming home now. I thought there was a little bit more left in the lap, but can the Shelby use its extra power to get anywhere near the Alfa Romeo. Let's have a look. We're on board with the wrong car here, but it doesn't look like it's the case. Less yeah, than a yeah. second between them across the line. Very, very good there. Great close racing to uh, finish off this THR four hours. Wow. Another car bringing it home then. That seems to be the... Uh, it is indeed. That is the winning Porsche of Jaden and Adamite doing some very celebratory donuts Beautiful. on the track. And uh, I do believe it should be time to hand you over to whether that be Pitman or anybody else who is organising this event just to round things up a little bit as we're going to take a bit of a break and uh, leave you with some of the management team. So it's been myself, uh, Michael 100 and my good friend Alfie, Alfoy, whatever you want to call him. Alfie. Um, call me whatever. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a privilege to commentate on this tonight, and uh, thank you all to Pitman and the THR management team, Margar, all you good guys, uh, for letting us have the privilege of doing this. So we shall leave the stream now, let everybody uh, filter into the pit lane, and uh, congratulations to everybody that finished the event. And thank you all for watching. I shall leave you with the management team now. And uh, goodbye from us. Thank you. Goodbye.